Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the chest. We're going to make get it on and welcome back. Sam Tripoli, one of our favorites. Good to be back. Thanks for having me, buddy. Looks like you're doing amazing things. Congratulations. I would say the exact same thing about you or any homeless guy that ever approached me. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Yeah, it's positive positive reinforcement. You can believe I I live in uh I live in Tarzana and outside of my house is uh, a guy sleeps in a van. I have a nice house and right out in the, the van has not moved in the year that I've lived there. And all I do is put positive energy into this guy. Believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. I I get it. I used to do drugs. I could easily be where you are. So one day my daughters are just playing around in my front yard. Uh, We have a nice fence and a front yard. And the guy walks, and he's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. He walks up to my girlfriend. He's like, I just want you to know that your uh, daughters are beautiful. She goes, thank you. Thank you so much. And then he goes, I have to tell you, your boyfriend's a little annoying. Wow. (laughs) I go, yeah. did you tell him annoying is sleeping on my front yard? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's pretty annoying. Yeah, I was driving down PCH today and saw the invasion of Winnebago's of people yeah. that are camping on real estate that is millions of dollars. It's at crazy. This, at this point, like if you would like to buy yourself a home on PCH, the over under is going to be nine point seven million, yeah. but it'll go up to eighty million, and it might dip down into the threes, like three million. But it ain't going any lower and than that's three million. Right. And these guys just pull up in that Winnebago, park it right there, and stare at the ocean for free every day. Is there like a lawyer that reads them, kind of breaks down the law to them? It's like, listen, as your lawyer, I can't tell you what to do, right. but if you get a Winnebago, you can just park it right here. <laughs> well, I, you know, as I was joking about, I think the last time I was doing some shows in Portland, there's a big Winnebago parked right on the street in front of the club. And the guy's got water, he's got utilities, you know, he's climbed the pole and he's broken into the wiring and he's running a zip line down to his place and he's got a barbecue out there in a kiddie pool. And I'm like, this guy is very employable. (laughs) I don't know anyone who could park a 42 foot Winnebago. This guy like parallel parked to a Winnebago in between two Priuses, gets out of the thing, hooks up full utility, and is living off the grid in the middle of Portland. And I'm like, you don't think this guy could get a gig as a greeter to Costco? Yeah, Swiss Army knife of just skills. Insane adaptive skills. Yeah, 100%. Electrician, plumber, yeah. chauffeur, yeah, teamster. You name it. You name it. A, a pit chef, barbecue expert, like a pool man. All He's got the a above. pool there. You got the other guys building the home off the 110. He's got siding. He's got a rock wall out front. Like He's putting roofing on the place. You don't think that guy could get a gig at Home Depot if he wanted to? I totally agree. And it's almost like when you see these like... These, these like food trucks. I, I don't have a problem with food trucks unless they're parked in front of restaurants. Yes. That upsets me because yes. it's like these people had to pay for all these permits and you're just going up and jacking their swag. You yes. know, but if you want to have a food truck in the middle of nowhere somewhere on the 405, go for it. I'm cool with that. But right in front of these people, it's kind of nuts to me. Right, and of course, the health inspector's walking past the food truck yeah, to go in and write up a violation <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the sushi yeah, place yeah, yeah. is mayonnaise was the wrong temperature. <laughs> That's these are the times. Well, this will roll me right into a commercial for uh, Modelo. Now, Modelo beer, I I would say it's safe to say that their constituency are who are Hispanics. Yes who like to toast but not drink. They evidently, everyone is toasting. <laughs> yeah, no, one ever, no one ever takes a draw off that beer, but it's they toast. Now, we're living in a time where it's still illegal to show somebody sip a beer on TV, although they can pop the cap and toast as much as they like. And apparently Latinos love Modelo, they love to toast, and they love to coordinate their outfits with the room that they're in. They, yes. There's a color mm-hmm. coordination going on there. We're watching it right now. So, Modelo commercials started off with like 
a boxer like Canelo Alvarez yeah, or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. work hard. You're yeah. Latino. Yeah. Now, you, now you just got done beating the shit out of a white guy. Now you've earned a beer, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so there's there's that, and then. They went into the guy who started his own successful barber business, yeah, the yeah, Hispanic guy. He yeah. slept in his car. He drove out here. And now he's got a business, a thriving yeah. business. Self-made man. Self-made man. Then they went into uh, Mr. Cartoon, who's uh, an airbrush guy, body, paint body yeah, guy, yeah. just custom. He painted one of my yeah. one of my uh, Bob Sharp cars that I crashed in a race once he he did he's an artist okay he's, he's legit then they go after mr cartoon but these are all hispanics that are running small businesses and medela would like to toast them yes. for their hard work and their contributions yeah. you know what i mean yeah. creating jobs paying taxes giving back now Medellas just said, fuck it. We're going right to the end. We're going to have illegal selling hot dogs out of a, out of a shopping cart. And this is the new Medella commercial. So uh, husband and wife. This, so hold it up high. Your five-star chefs on four wheels. Oh, my God. This is an <laughs> SNL sketch. <laughs> and after hours. Pushing, pushing the cart with the old lady. No matter rain Selling illegal or ghetto shop. dogs out <laughs> on the street. Because when you stay home, mayonnaise is 700 everything. degrees so out there. You are a fighter, and this is your reward. Medela, the mark of a fighter. <laughs> we just sold a bunch of botulism dogs yeah. to the gringos, yeah. and now it's time to toast. Are you a white chick in college who wants to have a job of uh, uh, basically having to pay off the cartels for getting you here? Yeah. Medello. Medello. Yeah. Medello's just went, fuck it, we're going right to the carts. Yeah, 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 I yeah. mean, they're really, it, they're going to launch a whole leaf blower campaign 100%. coming up, too. You know? Like, we're just there. They went, fuck the job, fuck the job for painting cars or cutting hair or boxing. No more. We're Cocaine going right. dealers next. We're going right to the food cart. Yeah, you've been digging tunnels under <laughs> yeah. the border yeah. <laughs> by hand for the Medellin cartel. Now you deserve a cold beer. Yeah, and you've snuck into the country through the UN initiative to flood the, the, the United States. You're staying in a hotel. You're getting per diem. And the government's giving you free Mardello. So that's what's going on you right now. You keistered <laughs> a kilo of fentanyl. Yeah. And made it trust the border. Now it's time to celebrate. That would be so funny. He's holding Medello as he's trying to shit out all the drugs that he smoked, <laughs> right. smoked into the country. <laughs> Salute. Yeah. Now, it would be illegal. It's illegal for them to depict these people drinking a Medello, right. but it's not illegal to show them engaging in illegal behavior by selling food on the streets of Los Angeles. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's totally, it's so crazy what corporate America plays to yeah it's not even you're not even trying to make money at this point no I, <laughs> you're like who has no money let me cater to you yes yes these guys sell medellos in front of sofa but they yeah. don't drink them in their kitchen 100 yeah, percent. although i will say i got i got two pieces of mad respect for the men at the top of the food chain and at the bottom of the food chain and here's what i'm saying these guys were able to talk their old ladies into chopping onions, starting at four in the morning, packing up the van, pushing the cart, slaving over a grill. I've never been with a woman that I could get to do 100%. any, not even one tenth of one percent of what these bitches are doing. I mean, these guys are in charge. I yeah. see those taco stands. Are, the women are setting up the tents. Yeah, I, I've the... never been able. If I ever said to a woman, "Set up a tent, go," She'd there's be like, Fuck no right feminism off. in 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 the hot dog vending no, community. It's gone. Zero, <laughs> zero. I know. You want to know? Is at the top of that food chain in terms of dominion over the old lady. I saw this when I was in Naples, Florida, a few weeks back. They had a big Italian car convention, and all these 65-year-old guys start showing up in Ferrari outfits, you know, driving shoes and oh, red yeah, yeah, slacks yeah. and pinky rings and Ferrari watches and Ferrari hats. And I'm like, all right, that guy's a douchebag, right? Then his old lady comes around the corner, and the wives start showing up, and they're in full Ferrari gear. Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, there's no way. I could have ever convinced any woman I was ever with to dress like an Italian clown and show up with me at a hotel. That's impossible. And the food cart's off the table too. I I I don't I couldn't have 
dominion over either one of those bitches. Yeah, right. 100%. Is that a, were they there for a race or were they there for a Sebastian Maskelco concert? Which there one was that? Sebastian was in town. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wait a minute, they shit in the car. What? And up then you with have Ferrari. Get out of the car. <laughs> we're at the restaurant. So, so uh, I found it very interesting because if you study just like generations, right? You got this first generation of car people. They got their chicks chopping like bell peppers at cart four in the people. morning, right? Yeah. The cart people. Mm -hmm. And then the next generation kind of gets into like the lawn maintenance business, right? Oh. It's like, it's a little bit more stable. There's work there. There's a set hours. Then after that, they start to get into like the, the, the hey, let's go work at Jiffy Lube. It's in, it's more of an inside job. And right. then after that, they get into like the Verizon wireless management company, right? It's right. like, now you got a little power. You legit. can tell white people what to do. Mm -hmm. And then the next generation is just lazy as fuck. That's the same <laughs> right. thing with Americans. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to see the, uh, you know, you start listening to the cure. You got, you, <laughs> you know, you're sensitive. You have pronouns. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon lot, the Latino community will have pronouns. Yeah, maybe, but they they rejected Latinx. Yes, they so did. So they may be taking a stand against stupid white chicks forcing shit on them. Yeah, I, okay, I'm, I'm with you on that, but they definitely start to get lazier as they go. Yes. All right. Oh, no, the next gen are, yeah. It's I like mean, you do so, that's kind of catch point too of doing really well, is like I do so well that my kids don't have to worry about anything, and then they start like chasing and fighting windmills, like yeah. they're worried about trans kids' rights and global warming, right? right. You're like, okay, so you have everything, you know, because it's like you, you have to have th you have to have three things, food, shelter, clothing. Once those are taken care of, your next thing is purpose. Yeah. And if you, are you born with everything, you, you search out other people's purposes. Oh, can I tell you, for me, I marvel at the fact that the newest generation of entitled kids, they don't even try to cover their tracks, which is the interesting part. See, we did shit, but we covered our tracks. You know, like I would babysit. Right. And when I babysat, I would raid the food pantry of the house that I babysat at, right? But I would go in and I would kind of count the Triscuits. You know, I'd be like, if I go for 15 Triscuits, they're going to know. If I go for eight Triscuits, I can do that. And I can do three Chips Ahoy. And I can do five Nilla Wafers. And I'll spread. And then I'll position the box yes. so the label's facing out. It's gotta, I'm not going to fucking take the box, tear it open, and throw it in the entry hall. Right. I said, my uh, my daughter's graduating high school. She said, we're going to have some, you know, have a little party over at the house, you know. I said, all, all right. She said, could you kind of give us our space and oh, we'll come home God. later? I said, yeah, I'll, okay, I'll, all right, I get it. I was in high school. You're graduating with a little party at the house. I said, okay, but no drinking. No drinking at the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It goes without saying. I got home. I opened my office door. I sat down on the sofa. And sitting on the coffee table, label facing in toward me, was a hard iced tea, was an alcoholic drink, half drunk, sitting in my <laughs> office on my table, like present, yeah. was being presented to me. <laughs> now, I would have drank the Mike's hard lemonade and the hard iced tea and the wine coolers and the butter. I would have done it. And then I would have dug a hole in the backyard and buried all the cans yeah, and then laid it over yeah. it and, and then probably put some sod over yeah. it and watered it or tried to get a dog to lay there. You know, <laughs> I would have gone like, like an American sniper. When they went to that guy's apartment, he was making them lunch and it was making them dinner. And at, at some point, they lifted up like eight rolls of carpet and found like a stash of munitions and guns in the guy's. That's how I would. That's yeah. what I would do with <laughs> right, my can. Right, right. But right. I wouldn't just sit in my office on my table. Facing me. Yeah. That's so like I sat down on the sofa and was greeted <laughs> with a beverage. But that didn't exist. <laughs> Well, if you study social media, people are just snitching on themselves. It's like unbelievable now how much people just put crimes that they're committing on the internet with their name. 
Like, dude, they'll, they'll rob somebody and then they'll show all the cash they got. <laughs> right. It's like, dude, back in my day. Well, that's another thing right now. It's like, we're really in the snitch culture. Something done- that Cat Williams did when he went off on <laughs> Ludacris and, and all these other guys. He, like, just went off on Kevin Hart. Now, like, I don't know what's going on, but like black entertainers just snitching on each other. <laughs> Everyone's rap. gay and a pedophile. And <laughs> I'm all loving this. this trend. <laughs> I like it too. Yeah, I like the black on black crime. There's so much black on out. black crime right now. Uh, you know, there was a rapper who got busted because he wrote a rap song about getting free COVID money and hammering the checks and defrauding the government. He produced a song and put it out there. And at some point, you know, the FBI just went, well, this guy's telling us exactly what he did. Like they know? are using their songs as, as there's a murder trial going on right now in Atlanta. They use the RICO Act and they basically are using this guy's song to say he basically admits to killing this other guy. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. People, I mean, like, dude, are we, uh, what are we doing? I don't, I do not. I do not know. I pull my daughter aside. She, I, I go pick her up at her school, and she like, well, I, I, I did this. I pull her aside. I go, did she hurt you? Did she hurt somebody else? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Triplees, we don't snitch, okay? <laughs> We're not snitchers. You keep it to yourself. Unless someone's getting hurt or something's getting stolen that you don't want to happen, you keep it to yourself. You're a triplee. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I'd like to be in a, you know, an unofficial triplee. You're right? official triplee now. You're in. I'm adopting you. <laughs> So, um, oh, speaking of kids, can I can mm. I get into something real quick? So, yeah. we were bringing up California. I didn't want you went on a rant. I didn't want to stop it, but we're talking about all the weird stuff going in California with all these um, uh, permits, no permits. So, I have a buddy of mine. He just put out a book, a uh, conspiracy book, but he he he's coming on my show to promote it. And he was telling me he's in Oakland, mm-hmm. and he was like, weird stuffs going on in Berkeley, right? Mm-hmm. So Berkeley is giving out giving out permits, business permits to almost anybody who wants to start a business as long as they agree, he says, to destroy the parking spaces. Wow. So they don't want parking spaces. You're like, well, what does that mean, Sam? It goes, because this is how they're going to get us into these 15-minute cities. This is what they want. They don't want you to own cars. You remember that you see it all the, all the time from the WEF, the you will own nothing and love it. This is where they're going to. So you can get a permit for anything you want. You want to start a Thai boxing school? Here you go. You just got to agree to destroy all of the parking spots around your business. So, so then you brought up the Boeing stuff earlier and oh, yeah. I, and so like uh, you know I've been studying like the WEF the UN and this like agenda 2030 stuff and I saw this thing that said like the U- the UN's goals by 2050 mm. and one of their goals said no more commercial flying mm. they didn't want you commercial flying so if you if, have you ever studied like 15 minute cities no, I haven't. Yeah, the whole what's goal, a fifteen minute city? Uh, the whole their whole goal is that you will have everything you need within fifteen minutes, and you will not leave this area. Mm-hmm. That's their goal. They don't want you traveling. They don't want you doing anything. They want you to sit in this area. So if we know that they want us to be in fifteen minute cities, why would they want us flying? Well, so this th- is also tantamount. We'll circle back to this, but in L.A., they go, "Oh, we're doing a road diet." And you go, what's a road diet? And they go, we're closing off one of the lanes for cyclists. And you, and you go, but there are no cyclists, and there's insane traffic. And they go, yeah, but it's good for the cyclists. And you're like, okay, do you think there's a large group of people who commute to work on a Huffy in Los <laughs> yeah, Angeles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or are you just trying to fuck us up so badly that we get out of our cars? Because it's, it's gridlock. And so every single thing they say, like, oh, we're just doing this. Now, what's the real reason yes. you're shutting off? You live in a place that already has horrific traffic, and now you're shutting off traffic lanes to create more traffic? 100%. And you think this is a good idea? Why? It's good for the cyclists. Like, But there are no There's cyclists. There's not enough so, of them to do that. So what is this? That's, that's the LAX, what it is. It's too. Get out of your car. LAX is ran the worst oh airport I've ever seen. So if you don't live in LA, you don't do LAX, just know there's the there's the actual airport and then surrounding the airport is 
basically two lanes. And it would normally be like back in the day, the inner lane was like for picking up. And then the outside lane was when you want to get out. You, so you just get out there. Well, somebody at LAX decides, <laughs> let's shut down the middle lane, move everything to the outside lane so that in the middle lane is only buses. But on the outside lane, there's still buses. <laughs> right. I, listen, the last time I went to LAX, riddle me this. The last time I went to LAX, I sat in the tunnel in Sepulveda for 40 minutes, like gridlock, stopped, nothing. And the thing about LAX is it doesn't matter if you go at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday night, it can be gridlock, or you could go Friday at 5 and it could be wide open. Like, you just never know the rhythm of it, and thus, you can ways it. And you can go, oh, it's going to take 35 minutes to get to LAX. But you have no idea if it's another 35 minutes just in gridlock once you get there. So right. I said, where is the camera? Where's the LAX camera? Like oh, they I love do, that Like idea. they do with eagles, you know, baby <laughs> eagles. You know? It's a long fucking horseshoe, right? Everyone comes in one side. Just put a camera on the out, on I the agree. end of the thing, and then I can go on my app or online and go, oh, shit, it's busy. Backed we got to yeah. get – there's no way to decipher whether it's a ghost town or whether it's busy, and you'll have no idea. It doesn't matter what day or what time. It's completely random. How many times you pulled up to LAX and went, God damn, this place is packed on a Sunday night. Yep, What's it right, so crowded for? It's packed. you know. Yep. And then you start getting agina. Because you're like, shit, I gave myself 35 minutes, but now I'm we're parked. And we're not even near our terminal yet, or drop-off, or whatever. Let's put a fucking cam and an app and let us know I couldn't what the agree traffic more. is. I couldn't agree more, dude. It's crazy. And then your anxiety goes up, and I think that's the whole thing. It's just constantly gets you in high anxiety or deep depression. That's just seems to be their whole... It's like this weird, if you want to get really deep, I, I, I get into like everything sorcery, dude. And I know it sounds nuts, but at the deep, they, they're all these like weird, like energy vampires, dude. And they just feed off. Like you study Biden, you're like, why does that make, how does that help anybody? You're like, and it doesn't. And like, he does enough of that where you're like, maybe that's the whole purpose is to just to get us constantly in this state of anxiety. Uh, I do. I feel the same way when I hear Biden talk or I hear Gavin Newsom talk. I go, what are they talking about? And why aren't they ever talking about anything I'm interested in? And how come they're always talking about some weird minutia that has nothing to do with anything? And to make your point, I was just yelling about this with Drew earlier. Um, it rained uh, two and a half months ago in the city. It rained. And then some earth came down from the hill in Topanga Canyon. And Topanga Canyon has been closed for two and a half months. The, the whole canyon is, is closed. And <laughs> one of the lanes on PCH is closed, too, because really about the size of two minivans worth of earth came down onto one lane. And they've closed the whole thing. Unbelievable. And everyone's like... Get a fucking bulldozer and get a truck and clean that shit out. And, like, we may not be open until September. Like, Topanga Canyon. And it's fucked up. PCH is fucked up. The 405 is fucked up. All the canyons around it. It's like, it's earth. It yeah. fell in the road. Go get it. Yeah. Go. We have done this before. There is a guy, every time I pass Topanga, Topanga on PCH, completely closed off. There's a dude, best job in the world. I, if I was 25... This would have been the job for me. Cones blocking off all the way to Panga. Another set of cones 100 yards back. And the 100 yards back is just one dude and a mobile porta potty sitting in the middle of the street. <laughs> and that guy just stands there and shits in that porta potty and then comes out and waves people <laughs> off. And I'm like, open the fucking canyon. Just You could clean this up in two days. If It's been two months. Yeah. No, we're not. Maybe maybe September. And PCH, now Topanga's closed. PCH bottlenecks to one lane. The traffic goes all the way back to Santa Monica. There's just a pile of dirt in one lane. Just you could get a fucking bobcat, three of the Mexicans from the Medela commercial, and that bitch <laughs> yeah. with her food wagon, and cart that <laughs> shit out of there in 12 hours. I couldn't Done. agree more. They won't do it. And, and you know, it's kind of funny. People started shaming them. I drove by the dirt. We're, we're in month two yeah. of a dirt pile that's creating gridlock. 
I'm just saying, if, if there was an accident and a minivan got all fucked up and was blocking the first lane, in 20 minutes, they'd show up with a fucking flatbed and they'd tow the shit out. They'd get it out. Just move the dirt. It's a yeah. bobcat. It's nothing. They won't fucking do it. And somebody, some neighbor, started putting signs in the dirt now. <laughs> and it says, uh, Caltrans, do your job. Yeah. Clean this up. So... My sister has a house in Topanga Canyon. That's where the uh, Black Lives Matter chick bought her six point two million. Yeah, crazy, dollars. right? <laughs> she loves white people. Yeah, that, yeah. Topanga Canyon is the widest stretch uh, in in America. I would argue because you go, well, what about Bel Air, Beverly Hills? There's just a couple of rappers. Yeah, and there's there. a lot of Persians. To Topanga, nope. Just fucking crunchy white folk. That's all it is. But the Black Lives Matter chick chose to live yeah. in the middle of the whitest stretch of highway in the United States. All right. Probably looking over her shoulder. Yeah. Probably scared <laughs> every time she goes to her mailbox. My sister's a house up there. They're not allowing cars to go up to Topanga Canyon. Unbelievable. And people live in Topanga Canyon. What the fuck is going on? And is this part of the plan? Here, here's my plan. Here, here's how we're gonna fix that. We're gonna get a Xi Jinping impersonator, okay, to hit up Gavin Newsom and go. I want to come to town. Yeah, I want to come to Topanga Canyon. Yeah, can we? Can I go there? I'd like to. Well, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to land at LAX. Yeah. I'd yeah. like to smoothly transition yeah. to the PCH. Yeah, 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 I'd like to yeah, yeah. zip down the PCH yeah. and then turn right and cut up to Topanga Canyon and see yeah. your glorious infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to go that meet the BLM up. chick up there. <laughs> I, so. I want to meet the BLM chick <laughs> yeah. in her palatial state <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that she got from her nonprofit uh, in, in the middle of Topanga. That'd be fixed tomorrow. Literally, when you see those guys and those little bobcats, uh, it is two dump trucks worth, and, and we're back. We're back to good. This shit's been shut for two and a half months, and we're going to keep going. Yeah, they so, said it'll be probably close to And again, like, how many of those what? people up there keep voting for the same people? Oh, they love it. And they just, it, it's just like the theory of this is worse than a mudslide that you won't get rid of, right? Like, yes. you'll sit in the mudslide forever, then vote these people out. I yes. mean, like, I have mo no faith in either side, but I have, way, I have a little more faith in one side than I do the other side, for sure. <laughs> uh, it's unbelievable. Well, here's to me. a great one. You brought up San Francisco. Which is great. And it's perfect. They uh, Somebody tweeted me that uh, San Francisco outlawed plastic straws in 2018. Uh, but since 2016, they've dumped 1.8 billion gallons of sewage into the bay every single year. So basically what we're talking about is Ellen. Yeah. Here, here's what you're doing. You're dancing. Yeah. And then going, yeah. finishing the show and abusing your staff. Yeah, 100%. But the, the straws... That's the dancing part. That's like, oh, look how much. Oh, we got, we're down to straws. We must be <laughs> out of front. Yeah. No, you're dumping billions of gallons of fucking sewage into your bay every year. But no straws. Jeez. That's it's misdirection. Yeah. It's just unbelievable, right? It's just unbelievable. Somebody was telling me that, you know, I watched this video about um, how they, they, they told you that they got rid of lead in paint. For children, and then you go, well, where else have they done anything for kids right. to make them healthier? And the answer is none. Mm -hmm. And the real truth is, it's like there's a lot of stuff going on with uh, radiation, mm -hmm. uh, and you know these five G towers and all this stuff. And that supposedly that the lead in the paint. By the way, the paint slows it down. All all the water based shit. Since they got rid of the lead, it sucks. You, you could go to a house, like you buy an old house. And uh, they go, man, last time it was painted, it was 1941. And you go, well, it could use paint, but it's fucking held up. Okay. Yeah, you go mo modern day paint, yeah. six years later, fascia. Yeah, you got to paint Fuck. it again. Got to paint 100 it again. 100%. Right. I'd, I'd certainly sacrifice a couple of retarded kids. Yeah. For what, me uh, not yeah. having to scrape that yeah. fascia every four years. I mean, years. dude, you would have to have kids just peeling it off like it's some kind of fruit roll up or something to eat the paint for me to think that's actually an issue. Well, I would say find a special needs kid in the neighborhood and put him on the fascia yeah, yeah. because who's going to know? My favorite thing is don't let the kids eat the paint, but just hit them with all these vaccinations with heavy metals in them. I mean, it's just like crazy to me, right? I mean, it's just like we don't know if we're coming or going. The mental gymnastics <laughs> to be a, a progressive today is absolutely ridiculous. Well, I, I, I want to show you a one minute clip speaking of doctors and uh i i i hope you'll sign off on this because 
I uh, spend a lot of time talking to Dr. Drew, and he laments the fact that he's a doctor, and so is Jill Biden. <laughs> and so is every other fucking Yahoo who doesn't know shit, right? By the way, the head of the... Um the uh, CDC, is it the CDC? What is the big, no, no, the WHO uh, is is a doctor and he's never gotten a doctor. And he's like, I am Dr. Schneegersnacker. You know what right. I'm saying? Yes. And he doesn't, he's not really a doctor. Well, I think I've come up with I, what I think is a solution to who can use the moniker doctor and who can't. And I, I think you're going to agree, but here's a one minute clip. Here's the deal with doctor. Uh, no more doctors for people who aren't actual physicians. Yeah. Now, Dr. Drew's a good friend of mine. It bothers him that everyone is a doctor now. Yes, he's an when actual he was a MD. So you want to know what the definition is? If you're on an airplane and somebody has a heart attack <laughs> and the stewardess gets on the blower and says, is there a doctor on this flight? Jill Biden's going to keep her ass planted in her seat, <laughs> right? Or let, what's she going to do? Read him a children's <laughs> yeah, yeah. book? I don't know what she does, but the point is, is she's useless. Yes. That's the whole point. So if somebody says, is there a doctor on a flight and you stand up, you're a doctor. Agreed. Other than that, I do not want you called doctor. Preach. It's got to be on a flight. You've got to be able to save someone on a flight. All right. Pretty simple. I think that's the probably the smartest thing you'll hear today. Because <laughs> uh, if they got on a blower now on a flight and went, is there a doctor on this flight? There'd be 31 people that go, <laughs> yeah, I'm a doctor. And they go, we got a guy who's having a stroke. Oh, okay. I'll sit down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 100%. I, it's got to be disappointing for the guy yeah. who's having a stroke. Yeah. Because, like, good news. There's 18 doctors on this. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And it's lesbian theory. Yeah. Oh, and mm. Chicano studies major. All right. Sorry. You're going to yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I'm a doctor in gender studies. Right. Uh, uh, what is your gender right now? What I'm having a heart attack. Uh, yeah. I have uh, I have more faith in people who stayed in Holiday Inn for one night than I do have these doctors. That's a good point. All right, now here's a question for you, Sam, yes. that we ask some of our more seasoned guests. I look at you as seasoned. Thank you. It's not fair to ask the kids. Yeah. But I'm going to ask you. It's a, it's I appreciate a, it's that. It's a piece of trivia. Uh, nobody in this uh, building got it. Okay. Except, oh, for, no. except for me, of course. And then, and then, sadly, Jay Moore. Respect. Jay Moore's the other person. Respect. And 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 no other. And I. This is Jimmy Kimmel's. He's been quizzed, and uh, Joel McHale, and and many others. Even Doctor Drew did not get this piece of okay, trivia. Okay, so that's less pressure. If smart less people pressure. got it wrong, I could get it wrong. Yes, Mark Garagos got it for obvious reasons when you hear He's the question. Armenian. Armenian. Right, right. Um, okay, Judge Ito's bench for the OJ trial. Yes. What was it adorned with? What made it different? What were... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the seal on the desk was different than the actual... California state um, court court. I was unaware of that. If that's true, yes, it was. A, there was like <laughs> different amount of stars on it. That, uh -huh. So there's a lot of people that talk about like w there's like some weird kind of thing going on with that trial that didn't make a lot of sense. All right, this is not the answer I was oh. looking for, but it doesn't mean you're wrong. Okay, it's Kubrick. But this yeah. was on top of the bench. Okay, he collected something. And this is it's it's as if you said uh, Sam Tripoli's really into Beanie Babies. Okay. And when you see his YouTube show, you'll see he always okay. said the Beanie Babies okay. on top of the uh, desk. I'm gonna get this wrong. Uh, I'm gonna go bobbleheads. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's not, not I like that. But I think that would be more obvious. Bobble action figures, Star Wars action figures, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> something Asian. What is Asian? <laughs> Samurai? Sam mm. Pokemon. Okay. Yeah. Pokemon wasn't around then. Was Pokemon around during? I don't think so. Uh, I, my final answer is I got to go with Bob. Uh, if you don't know, you're, I don't you're not going to know. I don't. And first off, I'd like to just sort of take a moment and picture Utopia before Pokemon. Yeah, there was. There was. There was. All right. Um, hourglasses. Oh. He had, oh, he wow. collected hourglasses and he had multiple hourglasses on top of yeah, his. Yeah, you're totally right. On top wow. of his desk. And uh, it, for some reason, it has escaped most Americans. They they forgot about that piece of, of trivia, but not not Jay Moore.
Jay Moore's the only one. And then Garrett goes, but that doesn't really count because he has a backstory about Ito and a of Rolex course, watch. Of course, and his of course, dad of and course. Every, everything else. Wow, Jay Moore got that. Congratulations. But if you, going back to what I said, if you actually study, there's so much about the O.J. Simpson trial that doesn't make sense. And one of them is like the seal Mm -hmm. on Judge Ito's desk at the bottom is like, it's not the traditional California legal system. Well, if it's any consolation, O.J. lost an infant son to a swimming pool death. Yes. Yeah, yeah, which is, you know, super tragic, but... Yeah, that there's that. You know, he lost a son. Eh, he's black. Probably could have lost a middle-aged son to the pool. Well, who well. knows? Uh, I mean, there's, you don't know. Have you ever heard the theories about his son? Super interesting. But, uh, and, and the two guys, the two infamous black men who had the fall from grace is Bill Cosby and OJ, and they both lost a son. That's So there's really some sort of weird. cosmic payback that or something. That is kind of weird. It is. I mean, because if you really, I've said it a million times, like really the ultimate punishment is not time in the joint. It's it's losing your son. Yeah. Losing your child is like, I couldn't, I wouldn't wish that on anybody I hate. I wouldn't wish that. I couldn't even understand that. That must be so brutal. Also, it's got to be a, you got to think about it for the relationship wise, because he was out of town and his wife you know, left the patio door open and the toddler, you know. And what I'm saying is, is anybody who's had those kind of arguments with women, which is like, hey, what, uh, what, where's my, um, where's my boom box? It was in the garage. You left the garage door open. I told you, there's always a conversation where I go, well, I told you yeah. that we needed to get the pool fence around the thing. And I kept telling you, but you kept telling, you kept putting it off. Like there's got to be a backstory. Right. 100%. There, and it's got to cause a lot of friction because you get in your shit, you know, you got your golf club stolen from the garage because you kept telling her to shut the garage, but she forgot. That's why. But you got dead kid here. Yeah. That's, that's bru- friction. Yeah. Right? That is brutal. It does kind of mean you get to eat where you want and see the movie you want for like the next six years. Well, you <laughs> know, if it went the other way, you would bring up the pool and the kid and yeah. you're there. If it went the other Not way, the you'd never hear Italian the end tonight, of it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. would have been in the mood for it? Yeah, yeah, little Billy. <laughs> little Billy. He would have loved meatballs. Unbelievable, dude. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's brutal. Yeah, it's it's, it's just very interesting, that whole O.J. Simpson It's thing. also insanely frequent. Like, I'm watching the O.J. doc, and it's like, he's there, and he's like, well, they're interviewing, like, O.J.'s uncle, and he's like, yeah, I lost my two-year-old in the swimming pool about the same time. It's like, this is a very frequent thing. Uh, on Mike Tyson's lost a child in a weird way on a treadmill? You know what happened? He, the kid got his neck twisted around blind a cord for blinds and like was like on the treadmill got literally choked out by the cord hanging from the blinds that's so weird isn't that weird that's so weird so like random that is and also like who do you yell at who do you yell Uh, at it's just a you think about those nylon cords that hang down from those aluminum blinds like you could anchor a steamboat to a dock with one of those like you cannot yeah they're super strong they're just gonna hold 800 pounds you know the you know kids fucking around thing gets around his neck i think maybe on to the treadmill and just choked out that's yeah this is how you go everyone's always worried about gangbangers and yeah everyone's always worried about their kids being abducted in a van and taken to mexico it's not it's some yeah. innocuous nothing the killer's usually within the house all the time that's right right all in the, the house yeah it's like that that's the crazy shit i have no a daughter she's autistic and she just loves she's like i call her jackass baby because she'll just try to find the most deadly stunt she could do mm-hmm. and you just gotta like stop 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 don't do that and she just that autistic kids are like uh x-men you like okay what is your superpower Mm -hmm. they all have superpowers Mm -hmm. and you just have to mine is can she find the dangerous stunt to do (laughs) to give her dad a heart attack that's what she does Mm. it's very weird how autistic is she she's she's a pinch 
She the got dusting? A yeah, a little oh, that's dusting. good. I mean, she she isn't speaking out about everything else. She's She can be sometimes easier to deal with than her, her quote-unquote regular sister. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but it just a pinch. She doesn't speak, but uh, but man. She doesn't speak? Yeah, she, she's she's four. Oh. She's not there yet. She's saying a tiny word here. What's that? When do kids start talking? Usually around two, maybe two, or sometimes three. Like my one daughter just right out the gate. She was mm-hmm. standing right out the gate and talking right out the gate. The other one is just, yeah, she's doing great, but the, you know she's adorable. My daughter started manipulating out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> they do that, dude. <laughs> she'd be like, the, the, the nanny would be holding her, you know, and she'd be enjoying cleaving to the nanny's bosom, you know, and then I'd come home from work and she'd be like, Two years old, maybe a year and a half. And I'd go, oh, now daddy's home. Come here, Natalia. And then the nanny would like hand my daughter over to me, but she didn't want me. She yeah. wanted the nanny, you know? So I'd grab, I'd go, oh, come here. And she'd go, poo poos, poo poos. And I'd go, what? She'd go, poo poos. And I'd go, oh, oh, okay. And I'd hand her back to the nanny. Go, All right, do your, take care of her. Yeah, you know? I get that. And I'd dude. leave the room. No poo poos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want to go back to the nanny. Oh, man, she knew exactly what she didn't want to hear. She gave me the high hat. <laughs> yeah, dude. She took the sombrero. They get that early, dude. And she, like, figured out that I would hand her back if she just started saying poopoos. And that was easy. That's so crazy to me, dude. It's manipulative yeah. early. Yeah, 100%. And it's like emotionally, they just start to realize. They start playing you early. They know if they cry, you come running. So as they get older and they can take care of themselves, they start crying. You're like, hey, dude, this trick doesn't work anymore. You need a new bag of tricks. I, I have a boy and a girl, and I feel like the girls figure that part out a lot earlier than, than the boys. Yeah. The boys uh, yeah. sort of want to be left alone. And the girls got you figured out. And they can figure out how to manipulate you. And they figure out how they can get what they want. And they also work on... Girls do this, I think, more. They know how to play one person against the other. Like, they'll come up to mama and give her one story and then come up. You know, they do a lot of... Mom said it'd be okay if I, you know, bought a Mercedes-Benz and drove it into the Grand Canyon. (laughs) She did? Oh, yeah. (laughs) She said it'd be fine. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, well, I didn't sound like she would say, oh, yeah, she told me. Like, they do a lot of against, playing, figuring, manipulating. No, I'm with you. I'm with you, dude, 100%, dude. I see them do that all the time. I love them very much. And, yeah, they know how to play the game, dude. They know how to play. I'm just enjoying it because, you know, they say daughters, by the time they're teenagers, they just don't even want to do anything with their parents. So I'm just enjoying it while it lasts. But, Uh man, and the worst part right now in modern day, because my kids are four. I have twin daughters. I love them very much. But, man, when you try to discipline them, Parents all around you give you dirty looks. Mm. Like, what are you doing? You, I'm like, you know what I'm doing right now. I'm not trying to raise knuckleheads, man. Like, I was at Chuck E. Cheese, and, you know, by the way, if you want to get into some New World Order, Chuck E. Cheese has gone completely digital. You can't get any Chuck E. Cheese coins. You got to use a card. And so my, my daughter's like, let me have the card. I'm like, you, you don't understand the power of this card. <laughs> yeah. Let me use the card. No, no, please. I'll bring it right back. I give it to her. Five minutes later, she comes back. Can I get the card? I go, I gave you the card. <laughs> I gave you the card. You should have the card. I don't have the card. I'm like, do you know how much, how hard I have to work for that $30? Daddy doesn't have Chuck E. Cheese coins coming out of his ass, okay? That's right. You have no clue the value of mine. I look up, everybody's staring at me. Oh, and yeah. They're, and they're day drinking at a Chuck E. Cheese, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. The only people keeping Bud Light alive, okay, uh, is Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> and the guys who sell hot dogs outside the, 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 the fucking Hollywood Bowl. That's the only people keeping Bud Light alive right now. I am, uh, I'm with you. My, uh, daughter spit on my nanny once and my nanny smacked her and i said good yeah i would be the same exact way and by the way guess who stopped spitting on nannies i'm with you dude that's the part they don't understand like the plan is is for you to never spit on another nanny and guess what you won't do it now you you got smacked yeah and it minus the smack the behavior continues
I'm I'm with you. Dirty looks, man. You know what I'm doing here, man. I'm trying not to raise a crime a criminal here. These are yeah. other parents. Too. Yeah, it's so you know what I'm doing, man. Get, you should be helping me. Like sometimes I'm at the airport and I see a kid acting up. I just want to go over there and help the parents <laughs> smack the kid. <laughs> right. Just like I'm some kind of like local superhero or something <laughs> like uh, American, Ex- you know, American Airlines Gate Five superhero. Just go over there, smack the shit out of your kid. Go, you're welcome, and just walk off. Like, did your parents smack you? My dad didn't, but man, one time I beat the crap out of my younger brother. He grabbed me and he chucked me across the room. Your dad. Yeah, and I'm like, I'll never do that again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, because my dad used to get the shit kicked out of him. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I'm not going to do that. But then one day I was just chaos. Mm. And he just chucked it. He just threw me. He never, but my dad, I have a joke about it, but my father. He would never, ever be, hit us, but if he wanted to discipline us, he would get the other one to beat up the other one, mm-hmm. and that's how he would do it. He called it a wink and a nod. <laughs> right. My dad would be, and I just beat the shit out of my and brother. I think that's what prison guards do. That's what it uh, should be, dude. Yeah, I had a PE coach, Mr. Walters, that used to do that. He'd be like, he knew he couldn't put his hands on some <laughs> snot-nosed kid, be like, old hopper, get him. Yeah, and just the big kid and the big kid would just come over and start beating on him, and he'd just turn a blind eye to him. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. My, I, had a, I had a football coach as a PE teacher in early high school. We're talking like seventh grade. He ran fight clubs. <laughs> he ran fight clubs. He just stopped PE class. He's like, okay, circle round. Uh, PJ, Triple E, you guys figure it out. And we just have a fight club right there. And it's like we've come so far from that, but are we better for it? No. No, no, Mr. Fitzgerald, when I played P- Pop Warren football at the East Valley Trojans, like if two kids were arguing on the team, he'd be like, line it up. We're going for it. Yeah. Like getting the three point stance. I'm going to blow the whistle and you just start bucking the other guy. Just start smashing into him and see. We'll see like what Rams do, what Alpine Rams do. Yeah. You let's know? get Mammal up Big here. Big horn. Yeah. Let's see who the alpha is. You guys have a beef? We'll settle it right now. I think that's totally the way it should be. Uh, we've gotten away from that, especially on the internet where everyone talks smack. And then you see somebody in person and they're like, hey, dude, it's like, it's just, it was just a joke. You're like, bro, no, man. There's consequences for your actions, and no one realizes that right now. We've gotten way, way too far. It's like oh, we're, Tyson- we're, in the, we're in a phase of now we're. Now we're just going to fuck with cops. I don't we're, get that either. We're just going to walk up to cops and start dumping buckets of water on their head and <laughs> calling them racist and Klansmen and shit. It's like, you're just fucking with a cop? You're 16. Dude, I once got a $350 ticket, and the cop wrote it to me, handed it to me, and I thanked him for it. That's how much I don't fuck with cops, right? <laughs> yes. He's like, yeah, I'm like, look down. I'm like, oh, three, I'm like, thank you. I'm like, that's the... <laughs> dude, I don't get... Like, I have such bad copophobia, dude. I mean, I used to do a lot of drugs and my only like drug tendency left is copophobia like I'll, I'll drive through bad sections of town just not to see a cop everybody should be scared of cops and everybody should and and i don't know people get way into this like respect thing it's like just look fear cops like you fear stray dogs that walk sideways. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe that dog. Why? You know, and you'd go, well, I'm in my neighborhood. Why shouldn't I be able to walk? I, I don't know, but that weird dog's coming across the street. I agree, go, man. Go, go around the dog. Cross the street. Just stay away, cops. And I, I've said oftentimes, don't look at them as cops. Look at them as random dudes with guns. Yeah. Would you get in the grill of a dude with a gun? I totally agree. A, a dude you never met before, would you be calling him a pussy or baby killer or whatever if you knew that guy had a gun and you never met him before? And the answer is no. Right. And if the answer is no, that's how you treat cops. Does it ever work out where you tell the cop to go F themselves and they're like, okay, and they let you go? And never, like, when you run, does it ever seem to work out? Do you ever, maybe once in a while they get away because they said, oh, it's going to get too crazy? But mostly you just make the situation worse. Yeah, I always love it. I love it when the cop goes, I'm going to ask you one more time to step out of the car, and then I'm going to, and they go, fine, go ahead and do it. And then at some point, they start pulling the guy out of the car, and the guy yells, what's going on? Yeah, I, yeah, like yeah. The, I like the what's going on guy. It's like, what's going on? He told you 26 times to get out of the car. I don't get it. And there is no version of this where he tells you to have a nice day, and you drive on. 
I do not get it at all. Now, I have been to court, traffic court, like 22 times, and I've won like 17 of those cases. Really? So, yeah, I do. I always, I have a whole system, What's and I've cross-examined them. My whole system is is the key is to push the case back as far as you can. And they mm. give you several dates. Mm. Take the last date, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Show up. Show up on... Um, Fight every ticket, by the way. Yeah, fight, fight every, every ticket. ticket. I agree. Uh, especially, listen, if you think that they got you on these traffic camps, what these traffic camps now are doing is all you have to do is go just tiny far enough over the line, it flashes. Right. And what they do is they just send you a, a, a camera ticket and everyone just assumes they lost. Mm -hmm. I've had two times now the flight it's flashed. And mm -hmm. I didn't go over, so I'm fighting them right now. I've beaten a camera ticket because they run the video. What happens is you show up, they run the video, and they show you. And what happens is they ran the video. You see my brake come on, light come on, and then the video stops. I'm like, bang! And then you know what he says to me? Okay, I'm going to let you go, but don't tell anybody. I go, wow, uh, I'm going to tell podcast. everybody yeah. that yeah. this is how you beat these stupid – because they're illegal. The yeah. traffic cameras fight, are illegal. Fight every ticket. Half the time, the cop won't show up. That's the. Whole, you, that's what you're really hoping. For, that's right. what you're really hoping for. I did that in Burbank. You want to talk about the ultimate chicken shit ticket? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. I mean, there's ticky tack, and then there's chicken shit. This is chicken shit. I'm in Burbank. Burbank. They hand out more uh, jaywalking tickets in one month in the city of Burbank than the state of Louisiana does that, in 10 years. That is like, so they crazy They literally to me. just hand them out. And I was walking down whatever boulevard that went into the mall over there in Burbank. It's a T. I was just a pedestrian, and I was at the intersection. And a, like a truck like pulled up to turn right, kind of like a cube truck in front of me. And then it pulled off, and then I walked across the intersection. Walked across, got to the other side, light had not changed, cars lined up to go the other direction, and a motorcycle cop from Burbank zipped across the same direction I went, strove right across after me. So I'd arrived on the other side, and then this guy rode his motorcycle across, and he wrote me a jaywalking ticket for stepping off the curb when the light was blinking. And I said, I was being blocked by a truck, but I just stepped off and I just walked across and I got to the other side and I arrived on the other side and then you drove across after me. Yes. So how dangerous could this be uh, if yes. you went after me? He goes, uh, I'm writing you a ticket. And I said, well, I'm going to fight it and I'm going to win. And he was like, go ahead. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And uh, then they make you pay the full amount, Yep. which you can then try to claw back from them. I, I would argue... You have a court date, right? Right. And the court date is there to determine whether you did this thing or not. Why do I have to pay the fine in full before we determine I whether I did it or not, fuck sticks? Yeah. I mean, that's just you making rules. Innocent till proven guilty. Yes, What's we're here. On? We have a date two months from now to find out whether I did this or not. Why do I pay the full amount of the fine now? Yeah. 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 It's that, total bullshit. Pay it. Then you go there. Then the, uh, the cop didn't show up. And then I won, and I got my money back. And then people said, oh, you won. And I said, won what? I won? Yeah. I got two fucking days out of work. Yeah. I'm fucking waiting around the Burbank courthouse. This guy just fucked with me and then never showed up because he's like, fuck off. I don't care. And whatever, what, what exactly did I win? And by the way, when you win, all right, I'll make you a deal. Uh, you got me for jaywalking. And the fine was, you know, $131. Fine, I'll pay in advance. If I win, I want you paying me now. Yeah. But because this is a bet. Your bet is it you should be you double your money. I want my money back. <laughs> I, I want my money back and I want your money back. Yeah. I want the amount of the fine. You are gonna remove 131 bucks from me. Now you lost. Yeah. So how I hope these guys never go to Vegas. Yeah. Because that's how it works. Go ahead and put your it money should out. Should be a casino. Right. I want my money. You tried to extract 131 bucks from me. It didn't work. Now I want my VIG. Because, by the way, this will keep you in line. 
The, if you start cutting checks, you won't hand out I chicken agree. shit tickets. I agree. This is a true story. One time I was driving. This is back when Sunset was like jumping, right? Just jumping. And I was with my friend Heather. We were we we're friends, but we were kind of, you know, it was like, could we, could we hook up? Could we not hook up? It was kind of that moment. So we're in traffic on Sunset. It's so slow, the traffic, that I decided to take my seatbelt off and make a move, right? Uh-huh. So I take my seatbelt off. I go to make a move. Suddenly, there's a knock on the window. <laughs> I look over. It's a cop. He rolls down the window. He goes, roll down the window. I go, what's up? He goes, here's your ticket for not having a seatbelt on. I go, I was just trying to make a move. Dude, you got to have your seatbelt on. We go to court, right? I do my whole plan, show up, take the last day. I always show up in a in a suit. Not the Armenian suit I got on now, but the legit suit, okay? Right. Because people show up to court in FUBU, pajamas. Oh, oh flip-flops. Like, fl- like, dude, like, like they just, just don't care. A player's ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A pimp, pimp cane. <laughs> a velvet that, hat with yeah, a big peacock yeah, feather yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So you show up in a suit, shows you actually have a little re- <laughs> chalice. So he, we, we have this. Um, we first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in the, in the, uh, in the court. People actually hire traffic lawyers. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest waste of money you'll ever do. Even if you win, now you're paying, right? Mm-hmm. To get a traffic lawyer is the dumbest thing ever. So I'm just listening to all these motions that these lawyers are doing. So it's my turn. I just start yelling out motions. Motion to dismiss, motion to continue, motion to do. You name it, I'm just yelling motion. Dismiss. No, 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 no. All this. So I go, I go, a motion to uh, move, the ca- move the case, move that. And the guy's like, I have to be here right now. I'm from a different county. I, I was just in helping. I have to be here. So the, she interviews him. Right, the judge interviews him. He he answers the question. You know, I saw him with a seatbelt. Blah 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 blah. So then he goes to me. I and I go. I, I go. So so you you. How would you say you pulled me over? Right. I, he goes. Uh, you were just pulled. Up. I go. Did you get on your bike, pull me over in a cart, or did you walk up and pull us over? He goes. I walked up. I go. So you walked up into traffic. It must not have been moving very fast. So you didn't feel. Right. Bang bang bang. So then she stops the question. She's like, enough, Mister Tripoli. Make your point. I go, the only reason I didn't have my seatbelt on is because I was trying to make a move on my girl that was driving. We were on a date, and I was trying to make out with her, and that's <laughs> it, with tra- with traffic was so slow. If you didn't at some point refer to him as Officer Cockblock, <laughs> yeah, I wanted money to. on the table. I wanted to, but it was a female judge, so I thought she might take it off. <laughs> Hand to God, she goes, okay, I've heard enough. She quotes Shakespeare about love and being in love, mm. and she yells, case dismissed, not guilty. Bro, the wow. entire court <laughs> went nuts. Yeah. Dude, everybody said, went, went, yeah! <laughs> they all started high-fiving each other, dude. It was like my Rudy moment. It was the wow. most hilarious thing I've ever seen. I'm high-fiving everybody outside. I want to high-five you. Love like, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that was a big event. That's a beautiful me. moment. Thank you, dude. I, like, I love, I could, if I wasn't functionally illiterate, I probably could be a great lawyer, you know? <laughs> but uh, it was my moment dude it was like the armenian in me just wanted to like thrive uh, yeah, speaking of cop phobia so um the california supreme court just ruled that cops can't detain people because they're looking or acting shady and trying to avoid them mm-hmm. um yeah because there's this i guess there's this case where this guy was uh he he saw some cops in this bad area and he went to he went and ducked behind a car, mm-hmm. supposedly to tie his shoe, and cops saw that he was acting weird, and they mm-hmm. detained him. And then when they frisked him, they pressed his key fob, and the lights for his car blinked. They mm-hmm. looked inside the car. They found meth and a gun and all the stuff, and he says that those were improperly found, and he sued them. So now the Supreme Court's like, yeah, if, if a guy is uh, acting shady or afraid or evading the cops, um, you can't, you can't well, stop. Well, that'll take a bite profile. out of crime. But it's helping yeah. minorities. That's but he said. did, he, you know, as a guy who used to party, you know, there are rules, right. too. The the rules. I used to be like, you know, drug laws, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't seem like it's helping. It doesn't seem like, oh, we're not going to press you on these drug charges. You don't go, oh, man, maybe I should learn my, my, my lesson and not do drugs. You're like, no, I'm going to do more drugs. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah. more of what you know. The cops want. are really upset about this, that these rules are I totally agree touched. with that because the guy did have meth in his thing. And well, like, that's my whole thing with even stop and frisk. Like, look, if you're not 
fucking packing heat and the cop stops you and goes hey what do you got and let's see if you got any weapons on you and you don't have any weapons on you then just continue upon your way that'll be 32 seconds out of your life and it's there for the greater good and it'll stop so many weapons being brought into the city i don't get what the and then it's always this thing where it's well it always takes a turn for the racial well okay certain groups create more crime right. than other groups right. and then they right. get stopped at a higher right. percentage that only makes sense the That's only how time it works you've been pro profiling for a long yeah, time yeah love profiling <laughs> the only time that i was like agreed with laws was that when they did the crack law because they were basically saying like a nugget of crack was worth like literally a helicopter of cocaine. And you're yeah. like, okay, that seems disproportionate <laughs> yeah, against one that. group of people. Maybe it should be all, it should be equaled out. But outside of that, I don't think any of these, you know, it's like, I, I always want to go to people, go, so, so you think the system is racist? And, and, I, and obviously, there was a time where it was like way more obvious than it was. But today, after BLM burning down everything and, you know, and all this craziness where like the cops were like, well, dude, what, we, we got to let them burn it down. We can't do anything. And then like there's a protest on fucking campus and the, they show up like stormtroopers. It's like, it, it, it's all, it's called nonlinear warfare and they're just basically trying to have you not have any clue what the rules are, right or wrong. Right. Right. But it's like, I want to go like, if we look at the prison system, what percentage of people in prison do you think actually committed the crime? Ooh. And if it's anything less than like 95%, you're completely lost in life. I mean, there are people we've seen, and you know, I donate to the Innocent Project because I, I, I think anyone in jail for a crime they didn't commit is like, just awful. And he's trying right. to fuck Kim Kardashian, but keep going. What's that? And you're trying to fuck Kim Kardashian. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, bro. That's I mean, I, I, that's a that's a that's a bad neighborhood down there. You know what I'm saying? That's a bad neighborhood down there. But I bet you it tastes like uh, fucking Kool Aid. I'm gonna be honest with you. The way she takes care of herself. But the whole point is, it's like what percentage of people are doing this? Like, if you get pulled over and you give cops shit and they pull you out of the car and then they find a bunch of stuff, there's a game you're playing. There's a game, and even when I did drugs, mm -hmm. I knew that I'm playing this game. I'm breaking the rules of the game, and if I get home safely, I win. If I get pulled over and they find drugs, I lose. Right. It's, it's not that they're racially profiling. It's like it, either you're playing the game or you're not playing the game. There's a very game. small percentage of people that are creating most all of the crime. Yeah. And if we <laughs> yeah. can just fucking get them out of there, <laughs> yeah. then we'll be fine. Well, and again, it's like, it's the. I, I just feel like we don't teach the younger generations, the game of life. Mm. And the, there are rules to the game of life. And mm. if you, like my dad, I love my father. He's a wonderful person. I couldn't have a better example of life of like what not to do. Because mm -hmm. even as a young child, I watched my father going, you do not play well with others. Mm -hmm. and, and it ended up costing him a lot. You know, and Your dad? I, my father. And then I, I would... I would what, what was your dad doing? My dad was just, uh, he he grew up very poor, mm -hmm. so he grew up in a time of scarcity, mm -hmm. right? And he was so driven to be rich mm -hmm. that no one ever taught him that the best way to make stuff happen is working with others. He thought mm -hmm. everything was boxing. Mm -hmm. There could be only one champion. Mm -hmm. And he never, ever wanted... And I, even as a kid, I would watch him. And I remember I was like 10 years old. And our next door neighbors wanted to do a real estate deal with him. And he wouldn't do it. And I just go, Dad, you, you got to play well with others. You got to... Mm -hmm. Even at a young age. And then I move out to LA and I'm in my disease and I see I'm turning into that. I'm mm -hmm. thinking everyone's jealous of me and my my talent you know now i realize nobody's thinking about me and nobody cares everyone's just white knuckling their life mm -hmm. but i was becoming my father my father never learned how to play the game of life mm -hmm. which is he didn't network he didn't know how to do relationships any of that. and i'm really bad at that i have a yeah. uh, social anxiety or whatever that is i i just i can't get out of places quick enough you know but you got to play well with others there's a game of life and like when if you're going to break the law uh, like real laws, if you're gonna break the law, you're you're playing the you're not playing the game well, and you right. can't get mad when someone busts you not playing the game. When you lose the game, and when you lose the game, you can't yell, "Oh, this is racism!" When you got meth and guns on you, when you're not. Now, I'm pro gun, and I hate gun laws. Okay, uh, give guns more guns. That's what I say. But you know, as someone who had a problem with speed, I like. 
crystal meth is the worst. I think it's dark arts and it's got, I, cause if you study like people who are homeless, they look possessed to me. Yes. They look like they're possessed. Now, Dr. Drew says this new super speed is causing a lot of the fucking problems. Yeah. Hmm. All right. We need to take a break. Chris got some news yep. and we'll do that right after this. Simply safe. Well, when you travel, do concerns from back home? Do they nag you? Oh, did you lock up? Leave a window open? Well, I recommend Simply Safe Home Security Award winning security and peace of mind wherever your summer plans take you. These guys have been great sponsors for over a decade here. We all use them. And like I said, when you move, you pack up your system and you take it with you, which you can't do with a hardwired system. Simply Safe has given me and many of my listeners real peace of mind over the years. And I want you to have it too. Whole home protection, a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras, plus sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more. And right now, you can get 20% off any new system. That's right. Simply safe. Just go with the Fast Protect monitoring system and save 20% at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Get your 20% off at simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Chime, you got to chip away at your financial goals. Find little ways to save and still have the occasional treat. Chime checking account. Fee-free overdraft up to 200 bucks with Spot Me or Get Paid up to two days early with direct deposit. Learn more at chime.com slash Adam. And boy, do not deal with those overdraft fees. Man, that was a big part of my life when I was younger. But no more with Chime. Eligible members get complimentary boosts to increase a friend's spot me limit. When you give a boost, they can boost you back and raise your limit. Just set up direct deposit into your Chime account. After qualifying direct deposit of 200 bucks plus, Chime will notify you to enroll you in Spot Me. No monthly or maintenance fees. Over 60,000 fee-free ATMs. It is Chime, right, Dawson? Take more control of your finances and say goodbye to monthly fees. Open your account in minutes at chime.com slash Adam. That's chime.com slash Adam. Chime feels like progress. Banking services and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. members of FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Boosts are available to eligible Chime members enrolled in Spot Me and are subject to monthly limits. Terms and conditions apply. Go to Chime.com slash disclosures for details. There's nothing more embarrassing than being at Home Depot and not be able to build anything at all. And you're just walking around going, hey, what is, you're literally showing pictures of things and asking, what is this? Is this, <laughs> right? And you just walk around, you're like, what is this? There's nothing more cucking than sitting there asking someone at Home Depot what this tool is. You ever done that? Trust me, I'm a man. I have children. What, what is this? What is it used for? <laughs> the woman who gave birth to my children want me to find man stuff and I don't know what to do. I have no skills except for maybe well-crafted dick jokes. That's about all I'm good at. Sam Tripoli is on the Adam Carolla Show. Sam's got dates. He's got a podcast. SamTripoli.com is where you go. He's going to be at the uh, La Jolla Comedy Store coming up May 24th through the 26th. Broken Simulation is the name of the podcast. He's got tinfoil hat as well. Got a lot of good pods. But, I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying. Go to samtripoli.com for all dates. Every and Thursday I do a, uh, a live stream called Doom Scrolling, where I find the best in conspiracy, uh, spirituality, and comedy clips, and I play them. So that's every day. It's uh, youtube.com slash samtripoli. Check that out. Every Thursday at 2 30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right. Some news, Chris? Yeah. So Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi. He is okay, but he was just punched in the face in New York. Yeah. 66 years old, uh, taken to a nearby hospital with bruising, Now, swelling. if he got punched in the mouth, no one would know. <laughs> <laughs> but he got punched in the eye, he yeah. probably had an eye pop out on him. 
Oof. Yeah. There's Oof. a lot of random punching going on yeah. in New York. In New York, it's gotten so crazy, right? Well, it, look, remember when COVID By the way, that, happened that, and we were like, oh, COVID's not a thing until Tom Hanks got it? Well, now Steve Buscemi now just Buscemi. punched in the face. This is a thing. And look at the guy who punched him, just shredded elderly man. I just shredded. Yeah. He... It's weird. The suspect looks much different than normal suspects. Yeah. The yeah normal it's like yeah. black teenage boys. Yeah. This guy's different. He's like, he's an elder from Zion. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, looks like he should be holding a tablet and wearing a robe. <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. That's a perfect description of him. But there's Wise so, black. There's so many, and I don't even know what this guy is. Is this guy black? <laughs> Like, it's always black guys, uh, although white supremacy is the biggest problem this country faces. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Really, kids, do, keep your eye on the prize. As many black people are punching out Asians on the streets, and as many crazy bitches are protesting on behalf of Hamas, as much of that as you see, always remember, it's the guys who listen to country music and drive the pickup trucks yeah, who are the 100%. biggest danger. Even though there's no incidents of them doing anything, 100%. always focus <laughs> yeah. on white supremacy being the biggest problem in this country. And domestically, these are the terrorists we have to worry about. Yeah, I remember when like um, the the uh, Asian hate was going on and you just video after video mm-hmm. of just black guy blasting Asian grandmas and then all the <laughs> Asians in Hollywood would be like, white supremacy has to come to an end. And you're like, right. are we watching the same videos? <laughs> I would tell a joke. I tell a joke about once every oh, yeah. 18 shows that gets a big fat groan from the audience. But I'll tell it to you now. I go, listen, I'm not for Asian bashing and I, I don't condone it, but they play a part in it. Because, uh, you know, when I was a kid, you didn't fuck with an Asian because uh, we thought they were all black belts. Yeah. And, uh, and they started to say, that's a stereotype. We're not all black belts. So they convinced everyone they're not all black belts, and now they're being belted by blacks. <laughs> That's a great joke. I like it too, but the audience doesn't know what to do with it. Sucks the air right out of it. Sucks the air right out of it. It depends on where. If you do it in LA, they heard the word black and they just get quiet. Yeah. I had somebody the other day, I was like, no, don't even, I don't even try it in LA. Yeah. That's my whole thing. Like, so this Netflix was a joke uh, uh, festival happened. Yeah. And, you know, I did a a show during it and the crowd was amazing because all these people are flying in to see people like Shane Gillis. Tony Hinchcliffe, uh, uh, Andrew Scholl, Ari uh, Shafir, Tom Segura, you know, all the toxic comedy people, right. people flew in for, right? So I was having a conversation with some people in the back, a friend of mine who, uh, Brian Simpson, and this other comic, I'm not going to say his name, but we were just talking, and Brian has a Netflix special, and he moved he to Austin. He was he, on he's yesterday. hilarious. Yeah, I yeah. love him. So we were just talking about Austin. He's like, you should be out in Austin. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I and, I told Brian Simpson, by the way, he had to come back, you know, and say hi to you. And he's like, I got to punch Asians. (laughs) (laughs) You just got to clock them. Yeah. But we were having this conversation and I'm like, dude, L.A. LA comedy sucks right now. And this guy sitting next to me, I'm not going to say his name. He's like, well, you know, it's not that. It's just like the bar's been raised higher in L.A. I go, nobody... It says there's nobody think that LA comedy is doing better because we're entertaining all of the when you when you shoot a show the woman who signs you in right like right. we're doing all the middle management people who don't want to laugh at dark stuff even if they find it funny because the social contagion of political correctness has just has just spread everywhere yes. it's the theory of something is worse than actually what's going on and that's the whole th- it's like really crazy to me and it, what what i found funny about all the asian hate stuff is like if you study like ali wong's new show uh the uh, was it beef it's a great show she's great in it but it's literally a show about how asians can't drive that's literally <laughs> that's the, the, the premise of the show is yeah. asians cannot drive mm-hmm. so if you and i went to netflix and picked pitched that show they'd be like dude that's the most racist shit i've ever heard mm-hmm. but if asians pitch it, they're like oh we love it so outside the box right mm-hmm. because to me asians are more white than white people. 
Mm. They're the most white of all the people. <laughs> they have the highest standards of living. Yeah. They have the most college educated uh, yeah. uh, uh, people. They yeah. have the most two parent households. Yeah. And they can be openly racist. Uh, Asian parents are the most racist people on the planet. It's pretty they sweet. Don't even it's like, pretty sweet. They don't even like it's other. Ra- they don't even like other Asians. No, no, if you're dude, in the wrong they group, get really weird. Yeah. With that. you're right. They're out whiteness. <laughs> They're out whiteness, <laughs> and nobody ever says anything about it. Well. We just did. Yeah, we're we're taking a you stand. You know, at the right next now. meeting, I'm going to bring that shit. Yeah, up. we should. <laughs> Folks, we should. We're being outwided. Pull your hood up so I can make sure it's yeah. you, and then pull it back Listen, down. Listen, you know I'm not in the sugar coating business, and I don't mean brown sugar, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I obviously. mean powdered sugar, but I don't sugar coat things. We're being outwided by the Asians. Now, come on, gentlemen. <laughs> I think brown sugar gives you more diabetes than white sugar. That's my opinion. Then I'd take care of a little house keeping. Uh, I'd go like, all right, uh, looks like there's a horse out there with his headlights on. Could you go out there and check it? <laughs> this is what we do at the Klan meeting. I love it. I love it. I love it. All well, right. Anyway, Buscemi's a assailant. Buscemi. Uh, he, he took off on he, the There land. was rumors that he was banging that super hot chick that everyone's in love with with the fat cans who did uh, hosted Saturday Night Live. Sydney Sweeney. That there was a whole rumor that they were dating. And I was like, you go. No way. Buscemi? Have, yeah. Have you ever seen them? There's, they say there's a moment where like young Steve Buscemi and young Angelina Jolie looked exactly the same. And you're oh. like the ugliest guy in the world and the hottest person in the world. Mm. At one moment, looked exactly alike. I buy that. I can see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. With the weird bulge eyes and the, and the uh, deep bags. Well, now you got to find uh, Chris Carter and Godzuki. <laughs> because I'm going to blow your arm of mind in a minute. Okay, too. I'm in. I'm in. Chris Carter, NFL Hall of Famer. Yeah. Did nothing but score touchdowns. Yeah. Godzuki, Godzilla's young son. <laughs> okay, I've been into Blue that as smoke well. Rings. I'm totally into that. How, like, uh, what Zach Randolph was like, oh, yeah, 100%, <laughs> dude. 100%. Now, people uh-huh. think that shit's racist, but what race is Godzuki? You, yeah, you know right. what I mean? He doesn't exist. So, by fuck the, off. Yeah, by the way, Godzilla is a titan and most likely a fallen angel Nephilim. So, that's a yeah. higher uh-huh. form of human being. So, I don't know what's racist about that. It's so, this guy who punched Steve Buscemi. I mean, what is he? Is he old? Is he young? Well, is he built? Is he well, fat? he's yeah. older, um, but uh, I mean, they just found security footage. Blue shirt, cap, took off. Can't Shredded. Find Ele- mm-hmm. It was eleven forty eight a.m. on Wednesday. Probably mm-hmm. still gets young white chicks too, because mm-hmm. he's so shredded, and you just don't know what age he is. Mm. Yeah, he's shredded though. Um, all right, let me uh, let me know what you think about this guy. So, this guy in California who uh, had a boat out in his driveway. Now he punched him. If he's a movie fan, uh huh, he didn't punch him for Reservoir Dogs. He punched him for Mr. Deeds. <laughs> I think he probably yelled, that's for making Mr. Deeds. Yeah, yeah wasted two hours of my life. <laughs> we got to see your potential with Reservoir Dogs, and then you did Mr. Deeds. Yeah. Yeah. Usually yeah. it's random, but... Right. Mm-hmm. Definitely wasn't Big Lebowski. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Deeds, he had the crooked eye. Mm-hmm. That could have attracted him. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a guy in California who had his boat in the driveway. It's Seaside, California. Oh, yeah. I love and, this story. Uh, and in July of last year, local government said, hey, the neighbors don't like looking at this boat. you got to hide it from view of the neighbors and build a six-foot fence around your boat. Mm-hmm. And so he did it. But then he hired a guy to uh, paint a mural on the fence, and this is what it looks of like. Of the boat. It's a mural of the boat. As if, as I if love this guy. the boat was not there. Oh, man. That it's is beautiful. so <laughs> That funny. is so awesome. That's so I funny. I wonder if Mr. Cartoon did this. We <laughs> could get a Modelo good. commercial out of the guy <laughs> who painted like the fence. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That yeah. is so awesome. There's nothing more <laughs> annoying than a neighbor with nothing going on. Oh, my God. And they just stare at the boat. <laughs> this is a better than Ezra band name move yeah. right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah perfect yeah. one-upper. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. So, that is wonderful. Anyway, that's a great painting, hero. by the way, too. From far Very enough, good. that looks real. Oh, yeah. No, that's good. And also, I don't know where you find this mural guy. Probably at the <laughs> marina. You know what I mean? Because everyone else is busy doing Magic Johnson and Martin Luther King. and 80 Kobe's. 80 Kobe's and uh, Cesar Chavez and stuff <laughs> like that. There are not a lot of boat guys out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's a boat graffiti artist? <laughs> <laughs> we got to find the best one, though. I think wow. we just did. That is awesome. And the, 
I can't even tell if the fence is the the gate is the gate or the gate's drawn on there. It's perfectly done. But that is that is awesome. Right. So and now what's the neighbor this. do? Yeah. Oh, the neighbor's got to be so pissed. <laughs> See, she's mm-hmm. just punching eight or eight of her ten cats. That's so. <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, and uh, by the way, other boat owners have approached this guy seeing if uh, they can get the info of the muralist. Oh, uh, this could yeah, be a whole he's starting thing. starting a revolution. Yeah, I like it. Dude, don't fuck with the boat people, bro. They're a small, <laughs> powerful clan, dog. That's right. <laughs> the boat people. Um, so there's this, this Arizona woman. She was in the news uh, lately because she was charged for trying to kill her husband by poisoning his coffee. Oh, daily. yeah, dude. Yeah, I heard bleach. about that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, now it's been reported that she has avoided jail time and has been ordered to spend three years on probation. Um so just a little background on this uh, on her. So her husband, he was in the Air Force. He noticed his coffee was tasting weird. But uh, after a while, decided to get like pool litmus or pool the pool testers and just see. Mm-hmm. And it turns out that there was bleach in his coffee. Mm-hmm. Set up some cameras, found his wife sneaking bleach into his coffee. Um, mm. and oh my it, god! Reported it, saying you know she's trying to get to get money um, after he dies. Mm-hmm. And so she's arrested, and he's like. Look, we have a kid. I don't want her to go to prison. Wow. I just and so everyone's like, "What are what are you doing, dude? Yeah. She tried to kill you." I, mm. I totally agree on like, that. Yeah. That's just the guy. I was like, I just don't want to have to have this kid twenty four seven. Yeah, that's that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't yeah. want to raise these kids, dude. No, no, no. If, he, if he was banging his guma on the side, he'd definitely send her up the creek. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, but he's got options. nothing going on. He can't afford daycare. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he doesn't want to do this kid alone. Put her under house arrest so she can't leave. Leave the kids there. And he does have the world's cleanest coffee maker. Yeah, for There's sure, no dude. There's no fucking algae growing in that shit. There's no bacteria. This is exactly why I don't tell my my girlfriend or my baby's mama where to get my health insurance money from. They don't mm-hmm. need to know anything, dude. Mm-hmm. Hey, do you get health insurance? Uh, you got life insurance? Don't worry about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't you worry about it. Yeah. I either did or didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much? I, listen. I can tell the difference between Starbucks right. and 7-Eleven coffee. Yes. You put bleach in my coffee? Ugh. I'm going to know you're putting bleach in my coffee. Yeah. I'm going to know something's up. Like the minute you taste it. Look, I, I just took this mug, and everyone here gets too generous with the detergent. They squirt too much liquid soap. You know, everyone that goes, oh, we got to clean it, and they squirt liquid soap in it. And then they think it's clean, but if you put water in it, it foams up because yeah. the soap ain't gone. I sat in front of that sink, and I just ran t- 20 gallons of water in the mug while foam just shot up because th- there's still soap in there. The residue. At the- some point, it was enough. I poured some coffee, and I took my first hit, and I could taste a little soap. Yeah. Just a, yeah. I just raised, went 100 gallons of fucking water through this thing, and I still could detect the soap. How do you not detect day one? And how many days you go going, uh, do I get shitty coffee every morning? <laughs> yeah. What do you go, oh, dude, we got to get a new coffee machine. This went, thing tastes like you're weeks. poisoning me. Yeah. He went on weeks, and then when he noticed the taste, he decided to just stop drinking it until he got this the This would have never. If my, so my if, guess is he's just dumping a ton of cream and sugar so oh, much that he yeah. doesn't even taste Oh, it. he's probably one of these assholes that likes French vanilla. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, then he gets what the he hazelnut. deserves. Let him go. Hazelnut, <laughs> French vanilla assholes, carnation, whatever. Fuck him. God, I mean, Let like, look at her. She's straight up trying to kill him. All right, but I do want to say this. The same way that the chick who let OJ's son expire in the swimming pool while he was out of town. Don't send her to prison. Stay with her. And you get to see whatever movie you want to watch and whatever food you want to eat. There's never going to be an argument. You want to see The Fall Guy. She wants to see the remake of The Notebook. Tough shit. We're going to The Fall Guy. Because... I kept you out of the job. I agree, dude. And Milk by it. the way, how much life insurance can you get when you live in a kitchen like that? Look at that kitchen, dude. Yeah. What is it? What are you guys living in a rehab right now? Look at that. That's got rehab a energy. Kitchen that bad since the Medela commercial. One hundred percent. All right. Well, you put well, the camera up there. Right. Oh, and by the, so I was reading this article on on the Guardian, 
And so they tell this whole story, and the very last uh, two sentences are: despite the attention that her case generate, uh, what her case generated, women in the U.S. are more likely to endure severe violence at the hands of an intimate partner. They have to do that. One they in four to. women do so, while the rate for men is one in nine, according to the National Coalition Against Domestic is Violence. Is it really one in four women? Or are we just? Expanding the range of the definition of violence, like, I, like I we did with rapes. Like, yeah, um, a hundred and seventeen percent of women say they will have been the victim of sexual assault by their third birthday. It's like, yeah. hey, okay, are we counting changing a diaper yeah, as a sexual I, assault? Like, you're now counting everything as something. Yeah, and now everyone <laughs> has it. And, and, Fuck and off. they've done studies where men are more likely not to report getting their ass kicked by their oh, girlfriend. for sure. I got beat yeah. up. Uh, one time I had a girlfriend, this gorgeous chick in Vegas. She was beautiful, and she was just crazy. And you're like, oh, you're so hot. I'm going to just, my life's on the line, but I don't care. You're so hot, right? And she got drunk one day, and she just was sitting him on me, like holding me down. Go, okay, I'm getting claustrophobic. Get up, get up. And she wouldn't do it, so I just... Lift myself up, and I saw her falling backwards, and her face went, and she just kicked me, right, and put my tooth through my lip. Oh, wow. So uh, the next day, I had to call him sick to work, because I just couldn't go in. My lip was all jacked. And then the next day after that, I go into work. I got stitches. And I told her, I go, yeah, man, my girlfriend kicked me right in the face. And the whole office just started laughing. Oh, yeah. And I go, this would never go the <laughs> no other way, way This would never go the other way around. No ever. Way. I got punched out by my stripper girlfriend a million years ago. And I was playing softball on a Sunday and uh, said I'd like come home and then I'd come home and then we'd go to dinner and a movie. But instead, we went out and got drunk and like we we're done with the softball game and they're like, come on, we're going to the bar, you know. And I was like, I said I would be getting home. Come on, one Modelo. We won't, we'll just, <laughs> yeah, come we'll just, on. just toast. <laughs> we'll just, uh, and you know, seven hours later, I just came home, my base, my softball uniform, shit faced, you know, and I just plopped out on the bed on my back. And she was pissed because the movie and the dinner plan was gone now. And uh, I was just laying there, my back passed out. And then she walked in the room and she goes, get up. And I go, okay. And I got up. I was still in my uniform. <laughs> she just punched me in the face. <laughs> and I just fell back onto the bed. And I remember as I was going back, as I was falling back on the bed, I thought, Good. <laughs> I, I, my thought was good because, A, I'm drunk, and I used to box. So I didn't really count that much. You know, I, I don't even, I've already but, forgotten uh, about it. Yeah, this is and then, B, I've just eat, I've just eat, I've even the playing field with this bitch. Yeah. She's going to have to apologize oh, yeah. to me yeah, tomorrow yeah. now. Yeah, tomorrow's like, going to be pretty sweet. That was the best four seconds of my life. We <laughs> completely fucking leveled it out. She, tomorrow, is going to have to come up to me and apologize. Did she? Yeah, she probably. Pro either way, as I was falling back on the bed, I was like, "We're even." You have yeah, something to look good. forward to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, fucked up good. our plans. You punched me in the face. We're even, Steven. I know. So, just so you know, if everyone's like, "Well, men and women," do you know the number one demographic for cops getting called to domestic violence? Mm. Lesbian couples. Oh, makes Lesbian sense. Lesbian couples are the you have didn't the gas up the Subaru, yeah, bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We've been dating three days. You just brought your U-Haul. It's like that's exactly. That's how you know. Mm. And guys just don't call in. And it's kind of crazy to me. So you always had, I remember, I forget what the what the case was, but it was uh, Rihanna or Chris Brown. And obviously yeah. that was fucked up. But you were listening to everybody on the radio talk about it. And it was like on MMA radio or something like that. And they were debating it. And the one guy was like, a man never, ever hits a woman, no matter what. And I go, yeah, men should not hit women. But you can't tell women it's okay to hit guys. Because once you, unless it's Adam Carolla shit-faced, right? You you swing on a guy, some guy's going to swing back. You oh, just yeah. can't do it, dude. Oh, it's they like, do it all don't the time. hit anybody, because you never know who's going to return fire. Right. I completely agree. I've been swung. That's why I can't date MMA fighters. There's so many hot <laughs> MMA fighters. Every girlfriend I've ever had has swung on me at some point. <laughs> Every one of them. Well, 
Well, this is a safe space for you to talk about. Thank it. You. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And also, you there may be, you may no play a role in, in that exchange. Are you victim blaming, bro? Uh, oh no, I'm, I'm victim vic- shaming. <laughs> <laughs> Were you wearing a short skirt? Yeah. Were you Was asking I asking for it, for it dude? <laughs> All right, one more before we bring Marion. Okay, sure. So there's there's this uh, California Catholic school. Um, and in 2017, these three kids, these three guys, they uh, or actually two, well, only two of them sued, but the, they put on this acne yeah. face, yeah. Acne mm-hmm. stuff, like cream a on mask. their face, and then it darkens into like a dark green. They took a picture of it. They send it to their friend. Their friend takes the picture and puts it on a like Spotify playlist as like the the picture for the playlist. Mm-hmm. But then 2020 comes along. George Floyd stuff, and somebody from the school sees this picture and posts it online. Ugh. They get in trouble. They get um, they get kicked out immediately from the school, or, or asked to withdraw. But either way, you gotta you gotta go. And um, so they leave. Yeah. The, they leave the school in June of 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, yeah, here's the picture. And uh, and now, so they ended up suing the school after all said and done for 20 million dollars. They get um, the case is finally settled. They each got like five hundred thousand dollars. Good. So Sue you, everyone. Yeah, if you study actually the the, the purpose of that, um, that's an acne mm-hmm. uh, base. What's mask. it called? Mask. mask yeah. yeah. Because their friend was having a really bad time with acne. Yeah. And they were doing this as a sign of solidarity to him. Now, I'm pretty sure behind it is a little shit talking, right? But their friend had a really bad acne problem. So they were kind of showing him that, hey, man, we're going to do it too with you. And they just got this. No, listen, listen. Uh, the notion that blackface, it was a bad time, 100%. Not saying it wasn't fucked up. But today, in a day where we're shoehorning like black people and never, like m- Doctor Who is now gay and black. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. he put the thing, he's like, sorry, white guys, Doctor Who is never for you. It was literally for us until mm-hmm. you culturally appropriated it. Yeah, from we, us. Just, we just had that kid, the Chiefs fan, who on Deadspin or whatever that magazine was yeah, trying yeah. to out him for half a black face yeah. i mean listen if you're looking hard for racism now you're gonna find bad, them you'll find it but it's also a bad sign it means racism <laughs> yeah, isn't what right, it used right, to be because right. you're fucking half what percentage of like hardcore big national race stories haven't turned out to be a hoax in the last five years is it 86 uh, percent yeah you know like they're <laughs> turning out to be hoaxes it's fucking crazy and you have to have some due process you can't just start ejecting people from their jobs or their colleges or their high schools or whatever it is without a little process without due process yeah they, they like there was this black woman I'll screw the story all up, but you're allowed. She, she's an Af- uh, She was literally African, I think, and and she was in some you know progressive college. And she, they said, look, no using the cafeteria. And she like broke in and was using the cafeteria and was eating alone. And like the fucking janitor came out and went like, hey, we're closed. You can't be in here. You have to you have to keep moving. And then she cries racism, and they fire the janitor, and they just start firing yeah. everyone. It's like the bitch <laughs> broke into a cafeteria and was eating when she wasn't supposed to. The guy works there. He said, you're not supposed to be in here. We just fire everyone and then ask questions later. Good, you're going to get fucking sued. Um, that's my whole point with it's just like the theory of racism, the theory of hate speech is now actually worse than real problems on the streets. Yes, it's good. I mean, it's good that we're at a point where we're trying to find it, graft it, and lay it out when it doesn't really exist in any real proportion. I mean, we're looking the black guy in Oakland hung rings on the on on the in the park on the tree and those represent nooses. It's like, okay, good, we're out of problems. Yeah, we're out. You, Cause you guys are now finding racism. It's so bad you gotta fake it. Yes. All right. Uh we have a very funny comedian who's coming in. You know Mary. Yeah, right? I love Mary. And I'm trying to think. I don't want to fuck her last name up. But you're Armo, aren't you, Sam? Bajajian. I, 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 I listen. I got asked one time to do the Armenian uh, Music Awards. I butchered everybody's name. I'll give it a shot. Mary's a shot. funny. Bazmajian. 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 Yes, I watched her special last night. It's very funny. She's great. All right, so we're gonna bring her in. 
And we're going to talk to her about her funny special. And She's great. And your Armo, even though you can't pronounce Armo names, so we can hang out. <sighs> okay. A praise I love it. Too. We'll do that right after this. Oh, Riley, Auto Parts. Well, they're in the business of keeping your car on the road friendly, helpful service, and the parts people with the knowledge who know how to do maintenance and repair. It's so funny. I was just driving up in my old neighborhood the other day on Foothill Boulevard, and I saw the old O'Reilly I always used to go to when I lived in the neighborhood, and I was wrenching on my own car because I had to. I couldn't afford a lease. I had to fix my own car. So they've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. You never have to worry. If you're in a jam, they got your part. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car, which is very helpful. And if it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right one for your vehicle. Need your windshield wipers replaced, the brake light fixed, or a quick service? They'll help you find the right part, or they'll point you to the nearest local repair shop for help. Whether you're an auto aficionado or novice, O'Reilly employers are knowledgeable, helpful, and friendly. They're the professional parts people. So stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. Celebrating 15 years of podcasting, here's a memorable moment from the Adam Carolla Show's Ace Awards archives. You have one vital lesson I need to teach my son that I need to pass along. Go ahead. You need to teach Sonny how to break wind without breaking stride or without lifting the cheek. The breaking the stride, that's pretty obtainable, but how does one do one without the uh, cheek lean? You kind of got to just maybe spread them side to side instead of don't, lifting don't the people, leg. <laughs> people don't see you spreading your asshole at the board meeting? <laughs> so far, there's been no weird looks. All right. Anyway, I just looked up there and I thought, Ben has a vital lesson for me to teach my son. And I, I actually thought about it, but I didn't know it was about spreading his anus cheese. Oh, yeah. Now for some new memorable moments. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Comedian Mary Basmagian. Yes. Thank you. I'll give some credit to Mark Garagos, who's helped me in the <laughs> department. Uh, I saw her the other night uh, out at a comedy club, the uh, Kookaburra Lounge. And uh, Funny American Girls, the na- or sorry, Armenian Girls, sorry. Funny Armenian Girl is the name of the very funny uh, stand-up special. I watched it last night. And it's available on Amazon, Apple TV, Google Play, and YouTube. And as I was watching it, I thought, that looks like the El Portal Theater. Mm Mm-hmm. It was. Beautiful theater. Absolutely. Right here. So I grew up out here. Me too. I grew up in North Hollywood. Oh, nice. And El Portal Theater was a movie theater. Really? Yep. And I used to walk there and go see movies like when I was a kid. Aw. You grew up, are you a Glendale gal? Uh, No, I'm Hollywood and Pasadena. But Mm. I represent Glendale. Because that's where the Armos yeah, are, right? Yeah, yeah. I was kind of, su- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you found out we were in Glendale. Yeah, I was surprised. like, really? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know how it works, but different groups sort of congregate in different places. And um, Glendale's like, you know, little Armenia. Right? Yeah, Armenians tend to want to stay closer to family and build a, a community if they can. So I think that's what we've done here. They're pretty, I think they're Armenians, like, here's what I don't like. I don't like when people go, I'm in this group, so I have to do everything that this group does. You know, I hate, like, as a black woman, it's like, just go do what you want to do. But on the other hand, I like the idea of the community sort of helping out, lifting up, you know. And it's a double-edged sword, honestly, because we do live in a bubble, and we do support our community, and I love that. But then we don't... um, we don't socialize too much with other groups of people, at least not the L.A. Armenians. Let me clarify that because there's East Coast Armenians. They're very much assembled into the um, assimilated into the American culture, mm-hmm. whereas Glendale Armenians, you're going to see Armenian letters on Armenian stores, Armenian bakeries. Everything is Armenian. So I feel like we've stayed in this bubble, um, which is good. But it, you know, it would have been nice if we assimilated a little bit as well, kind of like East Coast Armenians have. 
Yes, yeah, as white people here, we don't really know what to do with Armenians. Like we go, well, we know who blacks are, we know who Asians are, we know who Mexicans are. Don't really know what the Armenians are, right? But they seem to be okay, and you does, know, does it scare a, a peaceful you, people? And then sometimes they wear a little too much cologne, and right. some of the guys in the BMW has got rid of the cat back exhaust system, and now they're throwing <laughs> revs, and I'm fucking trying to take a nap here. But other than that, yeah, yeah. The, You're cool with it, yeah. I think uh, I think we're 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 not exactly sure what the cuisine is. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I do know they're a uh, they can be a tough people. Yeah, because uh, I think I think you brought up System of a Down in your System in your, of a Down in yeah. your stand up special. Did I you? did. I even tried to put in the Armenian genocide in there. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. man! Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll tell you, Mark Gergas would have loved that. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I I. I went to, I think it was Carousel Mm -hmm. with the System of a Down. Yeah. In the height of their powers. Yeah. And that is pretty much Armenian food, Middle Eastern food. And uh, there with the biggest Armo band in the world. This is 25 years ago. 2000. And um, uh, I don't know, Shavo or John or I don't know who they were going to order for us because they're showing me and Drew a good time. And uh, the guy ins- insisted on ordering. And the the place is going nuts because System of a Down is, is walking into their Armenian place. Right. And, um, They're like royalty. Royalty, yeah. right. So she almost, or I think it was uh, one of the guys. He's like, you got to try the these, these appetizers. You know? <laughs> and I go, all right. And he goes to order the appetizer. And the guy's like, no. And they're like, well, why not? And he goes, that's for takeout only. And he goes, all right, we'll just bring a couple to the table. And he goes, no, <laughs> take out only. And he goes, all right, we're not taking it out. So just bring it here. And this guy's like, I love the band, you know, but no. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's just an appetizer. Just yeah. bring it to the table. Because he built up this appetizer the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, not doing it. Wow. And I was like, wow, that's a culture. <laughs> he shouldn't have just done it. I'm surprised. I still they don't know what takeout versus take to the right. table means, but he would I not. I just think he didn't want to do it. He would not do it, even for System of a Down. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, how was. Uh, I know you talk a lot in the special about grandma, family, and mom. How, how was it with the Armenian family when you told them it was time to do stand up? Well, uh, some of them still don't know that I do stand up. Uh, <laughs> my dad's never been to a show of mine. Uh, mm-hmm. I love him, but I don't think he would be too happy about the things I talk about. Does he know that? That I talk about that kind of stuff? or I, I just mean, I, th- I do think there's some parents who kind of go, I, you know, whether it's stand up or pornography I, or wherever they go, I, I love my kid. I just don't want to go. I know what I know. I'm going to hear stuff I don't like know, or something. The thing is with immigrant parents, they can't even grasp the idea of what I'm doing. I told him I got a special and he was like, okay, good. Mm, the special is only yeah, for like, takeout. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, so he doesn't, I don't know if he grasps the idea. Like he knows that I do stuff, but I don't think he would enjoy stand up if like, cause his English isn't that well, even though he's been here since 1979. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. We stayed in the bubble. We didn't even have to well, learn if it, English. If it makes it any easier, my family's like, fourth generation American and they still have no fucking idea of what I do. Like <laughs> they don't know what a stand up is. I, they don't know what a special is. They yeah. don't know what uh, the writing for the Oscars. It's just like they just look at me like, okay. Yeah. So you know, it doesn't it, it doesn't all need to be a cultural right. thing. But your dad and what about your mom? Um, I'm estranged from my mom. Mm. So um, that was a pretty easy step for me to take to write about her. Uh, But the thing is, I wasn't raised in a traditional Armenian household. Uh, When I was in middle school, I moved to live in with my grandparents, which Mm. is something that doesn't really happen with Armenian families. Mm -hmm. And I believe that kind of gave me the freedom to do things and say things, whether it's on stage or online. That's another thing. If I had like an older brother, fiance, husband, boyfriend, I'd be like, take that shit down or whatever. Right, right. And then I wouldn't have that voice that I have today. How long have you been estranged from your mom? Uh, about nine years. That's uh, difficult. It is. And I'm also question your mom a little bit. And you should. That, uh, that the dads... Dads can be estranged, 
and I don't mm. uh, I don't condone it, but it happens like a lot. Yeah. When moms are estranged, I think, what is up with that? Chick? You wonder, like, yeah, because yeah, that's a real thing. Like, like there can be women you dislike and you disagree with and you dis everything with. But they love their kids. Right. You, you mm. know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like they love their kids even more, <laughs> the weirder, the sadder, the stranger they are. Lots of stories about dads moved to Miami, he's got a second wife, They have the, now they have kids, and it's been a, a couple of Christmases since he sent a yeah. sure. stuffed animal. Yeah. But mom's, something's up. Yeah. <laughs> Something is So up. I would assume something's going on with your mom. Um, you know, she was a young mother. She got married when she was 18. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. Uh, you know, some things happened. I ended up having to take care of both of her elderly parents at the point she, you know, she got estranged from me and her parents. Mm -hmm. So I took care of my grandparents. I took care of like end of the life situations and everything. I was a caregiver for about 12 years. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I... I don't know uh, how much I can, you know, say on the podcast, but yeah, there is something up with her. And she just, you know, didn't have a, maybe didn't have the resources to be a good mom or didn't even want to be a mom, honestly. Mm -hmm. I was getting high and watching Family Guy when I was 18. I wasn't having a kid. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So she probably didn't. Ha and then I guess what happens is days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, and then it turns to years. And then you're like, I can't come back from this. How am I going to go back and be like, I missed my parents' funeral and I left it on my kids. How can I go back to this? So I'm giving her the benefit of that, that she can't walk back from what she's done. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Some of it begats itself. Like it's been too long, and yeah. now it, it's sort of emotionally. Sometimes it's like it's like when a ticket goes to warrant, and you yeah. go, "Now it's going to cost two thousand yeah. dollars," and now and and then five years from now it's five thousand dollars. But it, it keeps getting worse. But you keep going. Now I really can't deal right. with it right. because and I it's think been so long. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably what's happening at this point. You know, I wonder if she's seen your special. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> no, I know. It's so sad. Yeah. Actually, the thing is, I had a joke in there where I had to change the words because, uh, you know, Comedy Dynamics was like, hey, you got to change this. She might sue. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? She is the type. Let me change that real quick. <laughs> <A -B -R. laughs> it's funny. I had the only show that my dad has ever gone to that I have done was at the El Portal Theater. And I love it. Oh. I do like, <laughs> I do, it, it, people are so readable. My dad's never gone to a show and he's never had any interest in going to a show. And he's never even asked a question about a show, but. But you're Adam Carolla. I know you think he's, he, the, the bloom's off the rose. Right? Okay. He's used to it. <laughs> so. It was the funniest thing. It was like, it was like, oh God, it was, it was like 13, 14 years ago or something. And I was just talking to him. And I didn't even tell him if I was going to be on The Tonight Show or whatever. I just, I just, I got out of habit of even talking to him about anything, about show yeah. business or whatever. And he, out of the blue, he goes, hey, I hear you got a show uh, in town here. And I go, yeah, I, I do. And he goes, oh, is it this Saturday? And I go, yeah, yeah. And he goes, oh, where is that? I go, okay. All of a sudden, I'm already super suspicious, which is like in life, you study patterns, mm -hmm. you know, and if you're going out to lunch with that ne'er-do-well family member who never picks up the tab, and then all of a sudden they go, hey, let me get the tab. You go, okay, they, yeah. they're going to want to borrow money. They, in they're Armenian, they, they say porotza. Like, porotza. Porotza. Like, what's your stomach pain? What do you want? We Okay, something's coming now because this person never does yeah. this, you know. So he's like, oh, at the El Portal, one Saturday night. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, Saturday night. And he goes, oh, well, maybe I'll come down there. And I was like, when have you what is going on? ever shown or displayed any interest in any kind of live performance i've done them all over town by by the last 20 years you've never asked to be in the audience or whatever and he goes he plays the trumpet amateurishly and he goes 
Maybe I come down and I bring my trumpet, and it's like, oh, there's there a crowd now, and he want, and he's a ham, and he wanted to come down and bring his trumpet and like get a little stage time, you know, before the whatever, whatever it was. I was like, oh, that explains your what interest, interest. <laughs> in this thing that you have no interest in, but that was the El Portal <laughs> Theater. Did you give him stage time? Yeah, I told him. Uh, I told him, come on down and. Uh, Bring your trumpet and annoy the crowd for like 15 minutes before, okay, okay. before I come out on stage. Oh. It's a picture of my dad playing the trumpet. But what I didn't understand is then when I went out on stage to do the show, he just sat on a chair on stage with his trumpet the entire time. And <laughs> I, was, I was trying to get him off the stage. And now I'm trying to do a 90-minute show with him sitting next to me with a trumpet the whole time. He never left the stage. So that's the most time Jim Carolla's ever got up on, on oh, stage. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> so El Portal's, it, it looks great on camera, yeah. by the way. Yeah. It's and so beautiful. I think it looked even bigger on camera, didn't it? it? I, I played there many times, and it, I, it only because of some weird mauve color hue they use somewhere that I, I, I did. It just looked like a big, beautiful theater. Yeah, yeah they did a Didn't really make. good Special job. Is, beautifully thank shot you too. thank yeah. you i really appreciate I, it on, and especially talked a lot about like online dating and dating yes so i uh, went uh because i know you, you come from such a strong armenian background do you date other armenians is that like the plan or does that matter uh, i was raised to marry another armenian to have armenian babies like right. that's like the number one you know we gotta they try to kill us off we gotta have babies and <laughs> Um, but the thing for me is, you know, I live in America. If I fall in love with someone who's not Armenian, it's not going to be end of the world. And my cousin married a white guy, so I'm good. Oh, oh good. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She did it. So, you Patterns know. and broken. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You got to take, I uh, got to have one cousin marry a black guy, really, just to set the table for you. Because <laughs> you do whatever you want after that. Well, so, she's yeah. got, one's got to take one for the team. Do you guys have fun, though? Like, is your family accepting and they have fun with the husband or like, is it weird? Um, with, uh, your cousin. Oh no, I was saying your cousin. Oh, my cousin. Black guy. Yeah, oh. My, no, my, my family wouldn't care about any of that yeah. ever. Like they would like it. They, they would like it if I was gay. I'm okay. sure. Um, yeah. they, they, they wouldn't, but they wouldn't know. I don't, I don't think they would know or they would care yeah. about anything, which is kind of a two way it's a double-edged sword because you get to do whatever you want. And then your family doesn't know about the good stuff you accomplish, kind of. Yeah, like, you have to yeah. pay for everything, too. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no college fund. You're just yeah. on your own. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> but there's no judgment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you pay attention, Adam, to who, like, who your daughter dates? Are you really into, like... No, I, I don't have any thoughts about ethnicities or groups or anything. I, well, I, just like the type of person. Like, what's what's? does he play sports? What well, she, I, obviously, if she dated you, I'd kill myself. <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think we all like this thing of like, oh, he's going to college or he's a captain of the football team or he's got a job or his dad's a lawyer. Mm. You know, like you, everyone wants a little bit of a pedigree you know, yeah. you don't want, you know, sort of homeless loser dude. Sure. But I uh, outside of that, I don't really have strong feelings. Yeah. But I think there's like indicators. Like if, if my son said, um, oh, I'm dating a girl and I'm like, what is her thing? Oh, she plays the harp at a concert level. I'd go. Oh, that's probably good. Yeah, like yeah. that probably means she's got some focus and yeah, she's not yeah. a drug she's addict. Driven you know, and yeah, she practices and her <laughs> family bought her a harp. Yeah, you yeah. Know? they can <laughs> afford a harp. They can afford a harp. <laughs> Possibly two harp family. Maybe they have Ooh. a road harp or a practice harp. <laughs> like like harp. they're yeah, yeah, that's sort of like equestrian stuff. Yeah, like yeah. oh, she's really into horseback riding. Like okay, the family's probably semi intact and has a little bit of money, money and yeah. she knows how to do stuff like there's yeah you can yeah i mean i asked indicators. my yeah i asked my dad i said what would you do if i married a non armenian and he just and he's quiet until he says something and he smokes like those uh Sherlock home pipes type mm, thing. He thinks good. like he yeah. won't get cancer from that tobacco <laughs> i don't know but like he smokes and he's smoking i'm like dad what would you do what, and i keep like and he goes what do you want me to say you're the one that has to marry them. I'm not the one who has to marry them. You have to live with them, not me. And I was like, you know what? 
He's right. He's mm-hmm. he's on his second marriage. Mm-hmm. So he knows about divorces. He knows it's not easy. So he's like, marry whoever the fuck you want to marry. I don't give a fuck. I don't have to live with them. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a delight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First pipe, second marriage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> those pipes will last a while. It does actually. I miss the Sherlock Holmes pipe. Yeah, he's he's all about. He'll be like mowing the lawn, just has a pipe in his mouth, and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's the like captain of his own ship. I <laughs> like that pipe, man. I like, I it like the way it smells. Yeah, I miss he, it. Yeah, it does. It does smell good. And then he has the pipe cleaners and the little stands that he puts his pipes on. It's 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 a part. It, it is, and it's like an activity. It is. It's it's you have to clean the pipes, you know, you Absolutely. have to arrange them, you have that little relish go round of the pipes, you know. Yep, that's, you can't oh, get yeah. at the you know, you can't reach the back pipes, you gotta yeah. turn it. You know, <laughs> there's no way you're getting to that back Carousel, pipe. That's yeah. eight inches back. Yeah. You know, you turn the thing around, then you do a move where you light it and you puff and you're thinking. Yeah, you know what I mean? right. <laughs> Except he's not. But as he's a not pot- thinking, no. but I mean, it looks like he's thinking. But as a pothead, I can appreciate the, uh, you mm-hmm. know, the pipes, the cleaning, this and that. I I enjoy it. You know, I see it. There's a famous character that pops up into my head every once in a while from days of yore on TV, uh, named Commander McBrag, and mm. Commander McBrag smoked a pipe like your dad. And he would weave these tales. You ever hear of Commander Never McBrag? Heard. Never heard of Commander McBrag. McBrag would would weave these yarns about going to Africa and slaying tribesmen or something. And <laughs> Commander mm. McBrag. Yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> and he'd say, quite, you know. Yeah. Yes. The, that. By a fireplace. It had a uh, it had a decent theme song. You can find it too, Byron. So now look, pardon me. Mm-hmm. But, but I feel like a better answer for your dad is marry whoever you fall in love with, not it's your problem. If you <laughs> right, marry the right. Guy. It's coming from the problem aspect, yes. You know, that'd yeah. be a more magnanimous way to answer that yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. So, I think he was going for that. That's the best he could do, Adam. All right, well, that's the best he could do. <laughs> and I get it. I mean, you know, not... Everything is based in some sort of racism or xenophobia right. or whatever. Like I, I get the Armenians are tight knit group, and they were there's Armenian genocide, and okay, let's have more Armenians. Like right, I, you know, make That's some where it's logic coming from. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know it's based in something. Yeah, we just and it's sort of always been accepted around the world. We just don't really like it here in California in 2024, where they go stick with your own. You well, know sure. what I mean? Sure, yeah. So is there is there a dating site you go on and is there an Armenian dating site? There are Armenian dating sites out there. There was a popular one that I got banned from. <laughs> it you got was, banned? Yeah. Mm. Well, now we have to know why. Well, now we need to know. <laughs> this was years ago. I <laughs> cussed out the admin and he blocked me. It was called ArmenianSingles.com. And I had put like a link to my YouTube because that's when I first started doing comedy. And he's like, you can't do that. And I was like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, watch your language when you're talking to me, because that's something that, you know, you don't cuss in front of women and women shouldn't cuss. That's something that Uh Armenian guys sometimes think. Mm -hmm. Um, And I cussed him out and I got banned from it. But there's other ones. There's like Yank app. There's this. There's a bunch of them. But like I usually go for, you know, the typical Dating sites, I guess, like Bumble, Tinder, whatever the fuck else there is. Honestly, I'm not on it as active as I used to be, but mm-hmm. yeah. How truthful do you find these folks, these suitors to be? I mean, are they shorter? Are they the hair's a little thinner, a little less college degrees? <laughs> like how, how, ten a- years yeah, how accurate is this? First, let me start by saying as a big woman, I post a full body picture. I make sure everybody knows what I look like, what I'm bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. I never want to hide behind that. But it's not about the height they're lying. They're married, bro. They're married. Oh, wow. They're married. Like, this isn't the Ashley Madison dog. This is plenty of fish. Kind of the same. But still, like, come on, bro. They're married. married. Aren't they worried about their spouse? You would think. I would think. My This one guy hit me up who was an old co-worker. Um, It was her husband. I worked with this girl. Years later, I'm working somewhere else. I hit up by this guy. And I'm like, yo, he looks familiar. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is so-and-so's husband. I hit her up. 
Oh, I, oh, oh, absolutely. I don't give a fuck. Good. Yeah, I was like, yo, I mean, your maybe. your man is on a dating app, and he's these. I screenshotted everything and sent it to her, and then Whoa. after that was it was up to her. I think she stayed with him, which is fine. Her business, not my business. I don't care. But and then he did something where I got blocked from the website, and oh. I couldn't. After did, it, did you feel any trepidation, like hesitation, like we're going like of telling her? Yeah. A little bit because I felt bad, you know. I was like, mm-hmm. this was a relationship. I she had always talked to me. We're coworkers. Like this isn't working out. This guy is. She was so excited about this guy. So I did feel bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, I, I don't. But then it, I think it was at a point where they had just married or they were gonna get married. Things were gonna get very serious, and I figured she should know before things get serious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. I just, I sent it. I was like, look, I, I can't do that. That's messed up. And then he told her that his cousin used his pictures oh. for mm. the, come on, man. Mm. She, he's not a model-esque looking guy. Mm-hmm. The cousin did not use his pictures. Right. Okay. Like, come on. Yeah. They find a better looking yeah, guy. Than yeah. Him. A better right. looking cousin. <laughs> I think we have the beginning of Commander McBrag. Oh. <laughs> this reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> He's holding the pipe in the safari suit. Smoking the pipe. In the world of McBrag. He fights monsters galore and then asks for still more. For so says the brag of McBrag. When on the hill the Marines plant a flag, they may be led by Commander McBrag. With a cannon in hand, he can beat any band. All right. Always with the pipe. Always with the pipe. Yeah, I, I bought a briar pipe a few years ago um, because my friend was having a going away party in Halloween weekend, and I was like, "Oh, it goes Albert Commander Einstein, Commander McBrag, oh, <laughs> and, or, or Commander McBrag. I mean, they, they have the mustache, they have the mm-hmm. gray hair." And I, I got up in the whole getup, dyed my hair gray, went to the party. It was not a costume party at all; just a random, oh, really? <laughs> regular going away party. I was humiliated. <laughs> well, I went one year. Uh, I think. Uh, you're gonna like this, Mary. Um, I went as a Zanku chicken employee. Oh, nice! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, mm-hmm. yeah, they sell the shirts. I bought the shirt. Hell yeah! And I'm like, this is what they would wear if they worked at the the Zanku chicken. The yellow yeah. shirt with the the red letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or blue, or it's blue, blue I, and red. Yellow. I had a yellow. Um, but did you carry around the garlic spread with you? That's the question. <laughs> Can I tell you? You don't like the garlic No, spread. fucking no. It's, it's fucking heroin. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. here's the... Okay, can I tell you what the garlic spread? Mm. Okay, I just did this. Uh, the garlic spread of Zanku chicken is the best. Mm-hmm. And it's so good that the family ended up killing each other over the recipe yes. for the garlic spread. And the garlic spread is just garlic, oil, and lemon. And it's killer. But... The oil is a fucking seed oil. It's all that horrible oil that they tell you not to eat. Okay. So, and unfortunately, it's the best tasting shit in the world, but it's filled <laughs> with that canola oil mm. and safflower oil, which every nutritionist now is going, get away from this oil. It's in everything. Mm. Get away from it. Uh, I made a batch of you can make that shit yourself. You just get a ton doing? of garlic, a ton of lemon, and a ton of avocado oil mm. or olive oil and just make a huge pile of it. And it'll last for a thousand years. It's not weird, fluffy, crystally, kind of like the Zanku stuff is. It tastes the same, and you can make it with olive oil or avocado oil, and it tastes nice. killer. Yeah, but yes, oil. the Zanku garlic paste fucking best i yeah it is and i i know like you know they i've heard about the seed oil stuff but i hope once in a while you treat yourself to zanku garlic spread oh listen uh, first off i would i would go there get half a chicken and 29 containers (laughs) of that shit because every bite was like a scoop of that i mean i don't know why 
I, I can't so tell you, good. but it's so fucking yeah. good. <laughs> and I had a run in at the Zanku, and you know, what was the run in? What happened? It's a story I've told too many times, but I ordered a fifty fifty shawarma plate, chicken, and then the beef and lamb, and mm-hmm. the bitch wouldn't give it to me. Were you with System of a Down? What? Yeah, because that might have been a to go thing. <laughs> I was an issue, and uh, I took a hard stand on it. And she would not issue me my 50-50 shawarma plate. I'm so sorry to hear that. And <laughs> I took a stand. I left the Van Nuys, Zanku on Sepulveda, and I drove all the way the one off of Western. I was going to say, you go to another one? <laughs> took me an hour and a half to get there. Fuck. It's that good. And I walked in. I said, I want a 50-50 shawarma plate. And they're like, would you like a Pepsi with that? And I'm like, you bitch. <laughs> Fuck me up royally. But yes, I'm, uh, I have integrity. Mm-hmm. And I ate Zanku. <laughs> and I did want a, a move that I'm gonna I'm gonna put all you people out on. I mean you can get into this, Mary. Okay. I was eating Zanku once and I was dog sitting my friend's house in, in Van Nuys and I was eating at the one in Van Nuys. I brought the food home from mm-hmm. Van Nuys. And he had this obnoxious dog that sat and begged and begged and scratched and scratched. He could smell the chicken and the chicken skin and the fat and all this stuff. Yeah. But I pulled out one of those pink turnip pieces, one of those pickled turnip yeah. pieces, mm-hmm. weird palate cleanser thing. Yeah. And this dog just kept bugging me and bugging me and bugging me. And I was like, oh, you want something? I got something for you. And I pulled out this big, long pickled turnip thing. And I went... Here you go, Rusty. And I threw it to him and he chomped on it. And then he looked at me like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I was like, hey, bitch, that's what you get. And the dog just went, all right, fuck it. I'm going over here. Oh. Yeah. Because he thought that's all. That's yeah. all you're eating. That's all I've eaten. So keep one of those Zanku turnip yeah. pickled pieces on you and just throw it at any dog that's bugging you or neighbor. Yeah. Just anyone's fucking with you. I'll keep watch your food. At all times. They will do that move where they open their mouth and it drops out. But they yeah. don't have the ability to spit. They just go, oh, they just go plop, and then they go walk, walk out of the room. That's a great idea. I, I love those things, by the way. Oh, I do too, yeah, but you wouldn't love six of them in a right. row. Like, you take a yeah, little bite, yeah, yeah. and you take a bite of the yeah. shawarma. It's kind of like our kimchi. Yeah, yeah, it is your kimchi. Yeah. What do you get when you go over there? Uh, I usually get the ha- like quarter chicken or half chicken one. I mm-hmm. love rotisserie chicken. It's the best. Um, and then my uncle's place in Pasadena is the Sahara Middle Eastern cuisine. Oh, you got it's a family really- member. Yeah. Oh. They also have a garlic eat? paste. Oh. And it's so good. We're going after this. <laughs> yeah, please come on out. <laughs> wow. It's, oh, that's yeah. my dream is to have someone in the family who's got a restaurant. Yeah, right. Just Possibly a in. gas station. <laughs> a restaurant, a gas station. You'd be covered, right? Yeah. Family members, why? That's what all my expenses are. You yeah. get to just go there and eat for free? I guess I do. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I do. Mm. My uncle is awesome. Um, but yeah, their food is great. And yeah, I go there all the time. You're absolutely right. If I'm strapped for cash, I'm like, man, I'm hungry. And I'll go over there. <laughs> are you going out and doing dates? Like, now? Oh, no. I should, though, right? I, I guess. Know. I know, right? I, just, I haven't felt like it. You haven't felt like doing dates? I, I, I saw you out Wednesday night. Oh, dates. You mean like shows? Yeah, no. Uh, I, oh, oh, I don't mean oh, dates. I know. I was like, yeah. I don't feel like dating Adam. <laughs> Do it. You got to get better. It's the only way you get better. <laughs> I need more date time. You grab um, onto that mic and you don't let it go until you get better. <laughs> Mike, who's Mike? I don't know tell you his name. Uh, yeah, I'm doing shows around town. I produce a show at uh, Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. Uh, it's oh, called. right. Yeah, the Vartush Loves You show, which is the character's uh, name yeah. that I do. Right, right. In the special. Yeah. yeah. That's May 30th, by the way. Yes, May 30th. It's a Thursday. Um, and I do shows around town. I'm doing one at the Haha on Wednesday for Jack Jr.'s birthday. Um, yeah, great stuff. Just doing shows all over. Let me give uh, your website out for dates. Not dates and not your dates you might eat for dessert. I know. And your people <laughs> love dates. <laughs> Although, you know, dates are pretty good. I hate dates. Uh, do not sleep on a date shake. Mm. Date shakes are awesome. Ever have a date shake? I haven't because I hate dates, but I'll, I, I'll give it a shot. I just find them too sweet. Once they take dates and they get them out of their natural habitat, they just <laughs> become sugar. 
Yeah. And so you saying I hate a date shake is like you saying I don't want any sugar in my shake. That's all the best part of the shake. You ever have a date shake? I haven't had a date shake, but I do the goat cheese and date wrapped in bacon thing. Oh, goat cheese. Yeah, and goat cheese. I, I, I saw that... Uh, at a restaurant it was great but i heard the shakes taste like snickers they're fucking awesome <laughs> next time you go to the palm springs like where you got married yeah stop at hadley's get a date shake fucking mm. awesome you don't have to like dates yeah okay. i've opened up a whole uh, new world to you guys you have yeah i'm going to pasadena for dinner and then palm springs then for palm dessert, springs yeah. for dessert. <laughs> so uh, let me give the uh, let me give your website out, Mary, and I'm going to spell this B A S M A D J I A N comedy. Yes. Dot com is where you go. Funny Armenian girl is the name of the special. It's uh, very funny. It's a couple bucks on Amazon. It's couple great. bucks on Amazon, Apple TV, thank Google you. Play, YouTube, right? Yes, thank all you. that. Uh, I'm going to be over at Kimmel's Club on Thursday in Vegas doing shows over there. And then me and Brad Williams will be at the Improv in uh, Irvine, California. That'll be May 23rd. And you just go to amcrolla.com for all my live dates. Uh, Mary, you're probably in the neighborhood. You're not too far. So come back and for pay sure. us a visit. I will. Thank you, you so a, much for having me. My pleasure. And Sam as well. You can go check out samtripoli.com. Until next time, this is Adam for Mary and Chris saying mahalo.